Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Everything continues. Uh, we are back with more Pentiment because this hype train is not going to stop. I refuse to let this stop. Uh, okay, Raptor, there was a question right as we were about to switch screens about what is Pentiment from Molecule Polycule. Uh, it's a game by Obsidian Entertainment. It's their most recent game directed by Josh Sawyer. As the record sums up, it's a murder mystery set in 16th century Bavaria. But much more importantly, right, the murder thus far... I mean, we've spent six hours in the game and haven't even gotten to the murder yet. Uh, we got to ominous visions. Emma, we got, we got to ominous visions by, from an anchoress. But uh, I'm sure no murders happened overnight. I'm sure nothing... Nothing bad happened whatsoever. It is going to continue to be happy fun times where we talk, where we get converted to uh, heresies by our Romani friend Václav, our Ethiopia friend Sadat, um, our not so much Lutheran, our Lutheran not so much friend Baron Rothvogel. I'm sure. I'm sure we're just going to talk religion a whole bunch, right? Right. Uh. Definitely not switch gears entirely. We promise. Look, this game could have had no plot, and I would be happy with that, but that is fine. I mean, our Ethiopian friend isn't heretical. Our, Ethiop uh, our Ethiopian friend is not unusually heretical. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, right? Ethiopian Christianity does some funky stuff, and the Ethi Ethiopian church in Rome, despite being permitted by the Pope and therefore not properly heretical. Definitely was heterodox. Definitely not not quite orthodox, well, Catholicism at this point. Too early for the second coming of the Brother of Jesus, tragically. This is true, Enclave Microstate. We are in the wrong part of the world and the wrong century uh, for the second coming of the Brother of Jesus. We will make do with our depression uh, about this. And eventually we will locate a game all about the typing for you. Okay. <laughs> you are here for the art and the funny voices and head-based choices. Exactly. It'll be a good time. Anyway, uh, let's not waste any more time because I am much too excited. Um, uh, let's just get into the game. Uh, pick up right where we left off. Also, chat, um, for the first time on one of these streams, my drinks have gotten fully seasonal, so I have chai lattes that have been generously spiked. So if I get, um, completely, completely off kilter, uh, blame the alcohol. You're here to support your boy Paul person? Yeah, that's fair. Fun fact, the Tewahado Ethiopian Church has the largest biblical canon of any non-controversially Christian denomination. That's very fun. Uh, will you be able to follow along without having seen the first two? Yes. Uh, you... You should be able to follow along. Do feel free to ask questions, but, like, this is a vibe piece. As far as I'm concerned, this game is, like, 82% vibes, and that is as it should be. Gabby B? Good. Uh, good luck. Keep it with your history degree. It is totally worth it. Uh... I have several degrees in medieval, or two degrees in medieval history, and one in cultural heritage, almost. So, we're, I'm going to be talking a lot about some nitty gritty stuff, but please do ask questions, which is going to be great fun. Uh, vanilla brandy, Arachne. The vibe is very pretty. Exactly. I'm not even gonna, I'm quite microsite, I'm not even gonna grace that by, like, reading it out loud. <laughs> Anyway, let's see, we, uh, the storm is going on, and the rain sounds are very good, uh, and this is all fine. Uh, since there's a bunch of people I've not seen uh, recently, talking to Taku, uh, and Emma, and Gabby, uh, let's introduce you to our main character. This is not the one I wanted to do, but that's fine. Uh, this? One of these buttons does what I wanted it to. There it is. We sh let's meet our boy, uh, Andreas. Andreas Muller? 
know some Dutch and French and can reference cultural touchdowns from Antwerp, Roos, and Ghent. He spends all of his non-working free time finding and reading as many books as he can. He knows a little bit of medicine, and he knows a great deal about the constellations, and more than a little bit about the occult. Klaus is going to be annoyed that I'm missing dinner with the Drukers again. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll have to apologize to Klaus. And more, much more importantly, uh, apologize to Klaus, but also apologize to our dear sweet boy Berthold, because I did him dirty. I absolutely did him dirty. Also, chat. Uh, when I say that this is a vibe piece, this is what I mean. Look at how look at how excellent this is. Uh, has the thing changed? Let's see. Tunk ateporicetes erat vix ulla benedicta monasteria in imperio. Abbot the abbot ordered the brother. Boom. Uh, I think I think the text at the top has changed, but I'm not able to see. You love that rooster. That's true. Wah. Shh. It's all right, Ursula. Ooh, that's a juicy thunder. Where are all the snail jousters, though? Um, on screen, obviously. They all moved into the overlay. They have escaped the boundaries of this manuscript. Hello, Zoe. A storm rolled in during the night. It's bad it let up all morning. Clara and I have been doing what we can in here to keep us all from washing away. P Peter and Jorg are outside, trying to deal with the flooding as best they can. Oh my. There's always a danger with this train, but we've lived through worse. Whatever happens, it will be as... Presumably God. Yeah, as God wills it. We must have faith in providence and endure what is to come. Someone needs to hug Ursula right now? This is true. Ursula is the dear sweet child and we will uh, do everything we can to protect her. Help her. Oh, I have some food for you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of flooding happening. Here. Sorry I couldn't prepare anything more. Didn't Otto ask me to say hello? He is probably for the car. Yeah, uh, I'll play Microsoft. That is an option in, uh, there's a dedicated option. Oops. Not the right button. Uh, this button. You can change that. Enables medial S characters in font, so you can disable that if you don't like reading it. Or, same with the ligatures, but uh, we love the 16th century handwriting here, so we are absolutely are keeping those in. It's so good. Good lightning. Damn. Alright, Chad. Are we going for the uh, beatific one? Right, follow Beatrice, our good friend from Dante. Or, St. Grobian. So what? Uh, they're not married, are they? Neither are you, yet. Wanna test the waters, heh <laughs> heh. Were we a good wingman? We're a, we're a good friend. They'd probably be happy together. Okay. Oh, he did? Hmm. <laughs> good. Thank you. Fine. Have a good day at the Abbey, Andreas. Try to stay dry. Thanks. You too. Uh, good luck. Aww. Oh, ch Jay. Holy shit, Andreas. Is that from the flood? Oh, it is. It must have broken it. Uh, broken in the night. Some of our sheep escaped. We'll have to track them down later. This is the way it always is. Rain falls on the Abbey and rolls downhill to us little people. Well, it's hard to blame the Abbey for that. That's just how rain works. There's a reason we're down here and they're up there, Andreas. 
Anyway, I have to get back to this. See you later. Dang. Oh, go big York. Go big York. I believe in you. Uh, was courtship like that actually a thing in the 16th century? Oh yeah, 100%. Hi, Andre. Hello, Andreas. Uh, good morning, Andre. So, Otto and Eva, huh? Yes, what about them? Come on, give me the juice. Nah, he doesn't like, he doesn't like gossip, so. I'm not a gossip, Andreas. What the practically asked me to be his messenger? I'm not trying to understand how things stand. Did he really? Or did you just assume the part all on your own? You started picking up poor habits in your time in Tassig, Andreas. Do I have any favorite characters yet? Uh, Paul. Paul is uh, absolutely perfect, and we love our sweet boy. Uh, also, we love Piero, right? We stand Piero in this town, right? Every kid is a good kid, and we also love old boy, old man Piero. Also, also, Matthew is adorably tiny, and Gertrude is friend shaped, and these are important details. Can't be the Gertners. Peter is stern. Maybe the monks talk too much? Well, if you ask me, I think Otto's being a bit too slow about it. Oh? He's old enough already not to be smitten like a boy. They both like each other. Seems to me, if you found the right person, you should go for it. True, Sister Margretta is also good. It's what I would do. What stopped you? Um, well, that's, uh, personal. Ill Peter is also delightfully grumpy. True. True. And honestly, all the characters in this game are good. Even the ones that I don't like, I love them because I hate them, right? They are so scummy that you can't help but love that you're hating them. We're to marry once I finish my Vandaya. I'm not even sure if she is the right one, but it is a necessary step. True. Vatslav. Vatslav deserves a place in best characters. Zdena is also delightfully irreverent. Uh... Well, congratulations, Yameso. Uh, congratulations on your grandmother surviving from the 16th century. It's very impressive of her. <laughs> it's not good for the soul to be alone in trails. I, uh, do hope to find someone to have on my side as we build a family. God has not given me this blessing. Why not? That could happen at any moment. One hopes so. Nah, let's get back to work, Andreas. Enough talk. Until later. Oh, well, that's all flooded out. Ducks! Quack. Chat, can we get a nice happy quack for these ducks who are having a great time? Like, everyone else is having a bad time around this storm, but those ducks are truly just... vibing. Now, chat, talking to Taku, Annabella, it's not. The emote uh, is actually Q-U-E-C-K, uh, because the, it's from a 15th century manuscript where the duck is labeled Quack. Not Quack, Quack. You love this stream the best, even though due to all the historical psychology, uh, it moves fairly slowly. Yeah, we, we are not... Yes, it is actual. It is actually Q U E C K, and it is my favorite thing. <laughs> there it is. 
the bakery. Oh, we haven't met all, uh, these folks yet. Uh, hello, Ulrich. God bless you, Andreas. <gasps> oh, Anna! Oh, she's so- she's adorable! Hi! Oh my god! She is the cutest! Oh! Uh... So she- my opinion on this, by the way, is if we spend 45 hours in a 20-hour game, you have to deal with me being happy about this game for longer, and that is to everybody's benefit. Andrea, such a pleasure to see you, and looking so handsome, as always. Back for more of my rye? Andreas! <laughs> I was passing by if I should say hello. Now I must say goodbye. Aren't you a good man? Well, you're always welcome here, Andreas. And always welcome to my rye. Be well. Until later, Gret. She's so cute. Hi. Uh, absolutely incredible. The Steinauer house. Please don't remind me. Oh! Oh, the... I mean, I'm, I love these houses. Oh. I love the textile work on the walls. I love that we've got the hanging stuff. I love... Actually, I can't tell what these are in the corner there, but if those are like hand like handboards for washing, I mean that would be extremely on brand. And we love it. Also, important details. Schlau is perfect. Kitty. More ruins. The Stolz house is... Alright, all these are... Not open yet. The cat's name is Sly. Yes. It's a good name for a cat, isn't it? Oh, uh, we should stop by the... Oh, the Drukers are not here. Dang it. I was going to... Oh, heck. Sorry. Father Thomas. Father, I've said this before, but isn't good that the water drains here so quickly. It's affecting the foundation. It needs to be looked at. I understand, but if you dig here, you may be disturbing the bodies decomposing in the yard. Of course, Father. But they're going to be dug back up any again anyway. Yes, yes, but why disturb them unnecessarily? It's your church, Father, but you can't put this off forever. The foundation is going to crack. I understand. Perhaps after some of the bones have been moved to the ossuaries? Thank you, Lucky. Mm. Well, good day, Master Paul. Well, good day, Father Thomas. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Oh, worry not. Lucky was just reminding me of the dangerous severe rainfall composed of the foundation. Look, we're just going to bust the foundation of the church and that's going to be fine. God looks after his flock, but sometimes the, the pen requires an earthly hand. It will be taken care of. God be with you, Andreas. And with you, Father Thomas. Until later. And can we go over this way? We can. Run through the meadow. Frolic. Adore the bunny. Oh, Till. Hello, Till. Hello, Master Muller. Uh, Martin? Hey, Martin. Aw. Eat shit, Andreas. Ah, shit. 
All right, bud. I should get to the scriptorium. Gerna will give me an earful if I'm late again. Let's go. Let's go. Um, hey, Miklaus. God be with you, Andreas. The weather is unfortunate, but the Baron's wife, Lady Salomea, will be arriving today. Oh, another character. Ooh, look at the hat. Look at the hat. A phenomenal hat work. <gasps> Chat, can we wave at our skellyman? Can we get can we get a uh, high at our skeleton? Thank you, Raptor Artist. Fellow skelly bones, exactly. Uh, so chat, this is a this is about as perfect uh, as can be. Oh, well, it switched. We lost it. We we had it and then we lost it. And so instead, we get cute pets. Hello, skeleton. Exactly. Um, the... The thing that's perfect with this is, you know, a little bit of a, the skeleton either drinking or waving uh, is a memento mori. A thing that becomes popular in the 14th century and continues to be popular well into, like, the 17th, 18th century. Uh, as a... Christian reminder that death is omnipresent and surrounding you. Uh, given what I assume we're about to discover, this is on vibe. Also, a cat cleaning themselves. Also, yeah, we've got a fox with a walking stick who we could read as, uh, you know, Grenard. We've got a cat cleaning itself, which is from an actual manuscript. Uh, I think it's in. I think it's. It might be at one of the Bodleian manuscripts. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I've seen it I've seen it not that long ago. And then a bestiary depiction of a lion. Um I don't know where the rabbit's from, and I think the three cats are just pets. And how long have they been married? Seven years now. She's a fine woman. A true lady. I was hoping to bid farewell to the Baron before he leaves. I'm sure he would appreciate that. He spoke highly of you before he went to bed. He was disappointed that you didn't debate him at supper, but he understands like you didn't want to anger the abbot. It does pay us. It's the abbot's table, the abbot's rules. We still have to work here for the next couple months. Of course. No need to make things more difficult for yourself. Oof. Oof. We did not do well. We did, we did not do a good job there. We failed. Perhaps not on this occasion. I believe you may have offended the Baron in some other way as well. Some way? Or some ways. I would not fret too much about it, Master Mallard. He is a forgiving man. Where has your master gone then? Some of the rabbits are not to Inclinati. The, the... Donkey with the bagpipes is also uh, specifically a one to that. And I think the frog with the hat? He went for a walk early in the morning. He didn't say when he'd be back. Seems odd given the weather. Not odd for him. My lord enjoys hiking in all sorts of weather. A little rain never bothered him. I can sympathize. We Swabians enjoy a good walk through nature even in such conditions. It seems so unusual in many ways. Ah, maybe so. I only know him as my lord for the last seven years. That one you think is a vicinity no see? Potentially. Uh, the half frog is real? Hmm. That reminds me. Did you see a short, surly looking young man in a hat on your way up this morning? Greetings and salutations to you too, Rayfax. Chad, are we going to throw Martin under the bus here? I think we're going to throw Martin under the bus here. Martin doesn't want to be friendly to us, we're not going to be friendly to him. The 
I'm not going with Sullen or Wider, but yes, that's him. He ran past me in the meadow as I walked up the hill. He was in quite a hurry. Ah, that would explain my lord's missing rings. I went to pack the Baron's things and they were missing. Why do you think Marfin? Yesterday I caught the boy with the hat. Murdered, I suppose. Peering in through the windows. I could have homaged him at the time, but, well, he seemed harmless. That's a shame. I hope the uh, Baron won't be too put out. My lord is a man of some means. He won't miss the gold or the rings. I do think he'll be upset about the book. He was quite excited for the abbot to see it. Wait, he stole the Historia Tassier too? Wait, Martin! Martin! No! Don't... Don't steal... Don't steal the Historia Tassier! I need the Jews! I need the petty bullshit gossip in the copy of this book. The quote-unquote scandalous history. Of course, I hope this rain lights up for you soon. God willing. Until next time. Until then. Uh, not in this weather. Being being out here would uh, definitely be bad for even parchment. Uh, there's a lot of ways that uh, medieval people went around trying to protect uh, paper and parchment manuscripts from the weather. The most common one is uh, the waxed that would be bound in a waxed paper to make the uh, it waterproof. Uh, I say bound, I don't actually mean like book binding bound, I mean just wrapped up. Because uh, a lot of manuscript sheets are going to be sent, uh, tra transported places before having been stitched together. So you just wrap all those in big wax sheets. Uh, and you'll, or bark, waxed bark, uh, once paper comes cheap as waxed paper. Uh, in order to help protect them. The other option is that you're using certain types of waterproofed leather. Uh, so there's one Scandinavian manuscript that's very fun called Grauskina that has got this big oversized travel cover that's actually a sealskin leather. And so you'd wrap that and then it folds over and then folds over and then wraps around to make it waterproof. So... Uh, if it's just an unprotected book, they're like, mm, this is bad. This is bad news. Nothing good comes from that. The guest house is really nice here. I love that we've got like stained, uh, slightly stained glass in here. Uh, is there a particular reason why God and various third person pronouns for God get filled in last? Yes. Uh, so this is basically replicating the way in which manuscript rubricators or scribes wrote the book. So almost always you wrote the black ink in first uh, for at the very least a section, often entire pages or entire manuscripts, and then you fill in the uh, red or blue initials to show emphasis. And so it's replicating that in the dialogue because this is the most bookish game that one could possibly imagine. And it is a delight. We we just adore it. All right. Well, hey, they put a bucket out. That's amazing. Saint Luke, the patron of artists, is also the patron of healers. Some of these medicines were made by Agnes uh, Steinavorn, with some help from Sister Gertrude. Gertrude is friend shaped. We love. Imagine life without the big four pen? Ugh. Without the pilot G2. Right. This is a paper mate ripoff version. But without the pilot G2, uh, life is very hard. Leave the aquarium into the church. Where is everybody? No, seriously, where is everybody? On a day like today, everyone should be inside, so where is... Where are they? Uh, 
Okay, but this is home for the monks. Like, this, this is home. Uh, but they're not in the dormitory. They're not in the aquarium. Is this... Oh. Alright. No one's in the cellar? The cellar is not in the cellar. No one's in the garden. Right. They're not eating. They're still not eating. Hmm. We're going to assume that the squad is... Uh... It's Andreas' birthday and they're prepping a surprise. They could be in the chapter house. Let's see, we can get to the chapter house from the church. I think. No, we have to get there from the cloister, don't we? You do enjoy it where there's a couple rooms where just nothing happens? Hey, that is as it should be. Look, I am complete. Oh, wait, I just can't get to the chapter house because there's a bucket in the way. But, right, like, this has all the correct rooms for this period. Uh. So, I'm, like, completely unbothered that there's things that, like, just don't happen at some point. Because, yeah, that's as it should be. Oh, this is wonderful. The rest of the abbey is soaked, and there's not a drop of rain in here. Good thing the abbot had ought to replace the roof to the scriptorium and library last month. With the, with the calefactory next door, we can stay warm while everyone else is cold and wet. A communal warming room in monasteries. Calefactories, the warm-making rooms, uh, are usually attached to the cloister, but in Kyosaw is part of the old abbey, and therefore connected to the old scriptorium. It keeps the monks warm and the library dry. Instead of bragging about our good fortune, you should think about your brothers and sisters and pray for their health and safety. The town has affairs as well. I'm sure they'll be fine. More importantly, if they're not, I don't care. Wow. By the way, uh, Nemo Semiotic, thank you for the follow. Also an excellent name. Brother Guy, your heart is harder than, harder than the stone of this floor. Also, where's Piero? Huh. We have the grumpy old monk, but where's the nice one? Brother Piero? Haven't you seen him yet today? I did, before Brother Guy arrived. Brother Piero left to speak to the abbot some time ago. What? Why is Matthew ringing the bell? It can't be Terche already. I pray stop soon. Such a cacophony is an assault on my frail ears. Historians playing historical games is best content. Litzel, you are correct, and that is the entire vibe of this channel. Uh, I have degrees in medieval history, and specifically medieval Scandinavian history, and I play exclusively historical games, defined very broadly as whatever games I play here are historical. So Elden Ring, historical. Uh, don't worry about it. But yeah, if you like this, do make sure you follow and consider subscribing. Have you played Crusader Kings? I've played a little bit of Crusader Kings. We're gonna try and get some folks who actually, like, are good at Crusader Kings on eventually. Uh, like, Dr. Robert Hodden uh, has expressed interest in coming on. I've known him for years. Great guy. Uh, but has expressed interest in coming on to talk Crusader Kings. I am just, I think, the only historian I know who doesn't like Paradox Games. Just, just to, by the way, uh, I do not, I'm not good at grand strategy games, I don't particularly like grand strategy games, but, uh, we acknowledge that they are important, and we play them anyway. Uh, no, Blues. Elder Ring is not nearly the weirdest historical game, uh, weirdest historical I've played. 
God, what can, what's probably the weirdest? Fire Emblem. Well, some of the Fire Emblem games we played on the channel are probably the weirdest. If we need a game to discuss the Chinger typing, Vicky 3. See, this is the way. We did play a Viking dating sim. You're right, Doki Doki Ragnarok does, does win the prize. Doki Doki Ragnarok absolutely wins the prize. You're right. Good catch. Uh, Redfax and Amaru, by the way, thank you for the follows as well. Oh yeah, it was incredibly fun. <laughs> it's not stopping. I suppose this means we're being summoned to the chapter house. God give me the strength to endure the raid. It's 50 feet, old man. You'll live. Uh, we have not played Total War on the channel. We will eventually play Total War games on the channel. They just have to do this little thing called stop releasing new games. Which means it may be a hot second. Cause, uh, right, we've been working on Kingdom Come Deliverance, but, um, then Plague Tale came out, and then God of War Ragnarok came out, and then this game came out, and so Kingdom Come is on hiatus for the time being. But we will come back to that, um, make thing, ma and make things happen. Um, and then, you know, by the time we finished up all of those, it's gonna be March, and then we'll have Assassin's Creed Mirage, so, you know, it's a good time to be doing medieval history, I think. Uh, King of Deliverance is an interesting one, let's sell. I have a quadrillion hot takes about King of Deliverance, but basically, the core hot take, which you guys are getting for free, uh, by the way, is that this game has a lot of the same goals as Kingdom Come Deliverance, and just is infinitely better. Uh, isn't it based on the devs' hometown? It's based, uh, yeah, I think one of the devs is from, uh, the area around Sasau. But yeah, it, I mean, the, de the devs of that game are Czech. I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who worked on the game, uh, by the way. Actually, not even that many steps. I know someone who knows someone who worked on the game. But yeah, we will talk about Kingdom Come, like when Kingdom Come, when we return to Kingdom Come. The VODs of that are on YouTube thus far, and we will have academics uh, from Charles University showing up at some point as well. Uh, Jan Kramer, uh, Kramer has uh, agreed to come on eventually when we have more time, so... Gonna say it now, someone got murdered? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Who could have predicted that someone got murdered uh, with these bells of someone got dead at 7.30 in the morning? Because we are still uh, in Prima, right? We're still in Prime. So that means it's sometime between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. There it is. Hello, Scream. Why am still Scream? The, the chapter house. Oh, that's the garden. That is not the correct place. That's okay. We made it there anyway. Oh, that's everybody. Oh! What's happened? I think it's the Baron. He's been hurt. Piero! Please, Father, where is Brother Florian? Have him come quickly. Be silent, Brother. Brother Florian, if you please. Oh wow, Florian's a tall lad. Oh, and Sadat just rolled up late. Uh, chat? Observe that Sadat got ro rolled up great. I'm sorry, Father. There's nothing to be done. He's dead. Ah Sister Margretta, calm yourself. Sister Gertrude, please take Sister Margretta back to the garden. Yes, Mother Cecilia. God protect us. The Baron is, was, a friend of the Prince Bishop of Freisick. Why is he so worried about the Prince Bishop? The Abbey is odd in more than one way. 
Its existence offends some in the church. We are far enough from Rome and man, but everyone forgets about us, but this could bring unwanted attention. Mainz, located on the Rhine River, uh, Mainz is the home of the Archbishop of Mainz, an elector of the Holy Roman Empire, and Primus Germaniae, the Pope's substitute north of the Alps. Um, I think that was the pulling the knife out of it. Oh, this, it's just my, this is just my walking around knife. Exactly. Nothing suspicious here. Florian, how easily do you think you could dispose of this body? No. Father Abbot, what are you saying? Why are you questioning me? Why are you wasting precious time? Do you want to see the soldiers of the Prince Bishop march up our steps and fling your brothers and sisters out of our home? Uncle Magistrate, State. Boo these pawns. Boo. Do Prada. But so to sacra. Ooh, ooh, chat. Chat. Look at all the languages. Look at look at the, all those languages. Uh, we had two people say things in Czech, Zdena and Vaislav, uh, say things in Czech. Uh, so to Sakra is what the basically what the hell. <laughs> Silence! Calm yourselves, all of you. Father Abbot, Baron Rothvogel's manservant is already preparing to leave. The Baron's wife should be here in a matter of hours. This is not the time for rash decisions. Yes. Yes, you're right. Forgive me. Asking a monk to dispose of a corpse is bold. But then, what will we do? We must send the Baron's man to, man to the court of the Prince Bishop in Freising at once. Mother Cecilia, the Baron said the Prince Bishop's archdeacon was in Innsbruck for the Imperial Diet. Even better, swift action will silence any whispers of impropriety on our part. Given the Baron's stature, the Archdeacon will undoubtedly come to investigate immediately. We must cooperate with him fully and pray for a speedy resolution. Yes, yes, good. Thank you, Mother Cecilia. Brother Voislav, please detain Brother Piero in the cellar until the Prince Bishop's man arrives. What? Brother Piero? Why? That's absurd. He was caught in fragante delicto. In blazing offense. Indicating the individual has a caught red-handed, basically. Covered in blood with a knife in his hand. Father, do you really believe that Brother Piero is capable of such a foul deed? Also, I would observe uh, early modern uh, theories of physicality would absolutely suggest that he is physically incapable of Brother Piero who is wizened by age and a uh, visible arthritis, look at those clawed hands, uh, to defeat in battle uh, and thereby stab uh, a baron in the prime of his life. Like, not physically possible. Uh, that won't stop them, and that's fine, but there's a lot of natural philosophical treaties that would be like, mm, I don't think so. Yes, capable enough when motivated by anger. I had no anger against the bear and father rabbit. I simply came across him like this. No anger? Not even for insulting your work and forcing us to give it to Andreas? This is not a subject for debate. When the Prince Bishop's man arrives, we must not be empty-handed. Hey, look at that! He's not... He has an advanced palsy in his hand that affects his fingers. He could barely hold a knife, much less use it to kill someone. Hey, look at that! If I wanted a medical opinion, I would ask Brother Florian or the respectable Dr. Stoltz. I don't, and this is not your affair. I am through debating with you. I know something quite well previously, that sneak. <laughs> My decision stands. Brother Voislav will detain Brother Piero in the cellar until I say otherwise. Brother Florian, please escort Andreas out of the abbey. Andreas, do not show your face here again until tomorrow. Do you understand me? 
Father Gerno is very sus. Exactly. Adele, oh, why are you walking with a knife? Um, um, help. Andreas, listen to me. I sympathize with you. I don't think Piero did this either, but this isn't the time to push the abbot. I'm sure the other brothers and sisters believe Piero is innocent as well, but the abbot is worried about the prince bishop's attention. Father Gerno, red herring from wherever he was from. Uh, he's from Burgundy, isn't he? No, Munich. He's from Munich, isn't he? He's from somewhere over there. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to see it. Take a few hours to calm your nerves and your mind. You need to think clearly. Go to the Druckers, eat a good meal, and come back at no nights. Monastic hour course, mind to 3 p.m. Guy is from Burgundy. That's what it is. We won't have much time, but tap on my window with a small stone and I'll let you in. Let me in for what? To examine the body. Hell yeah. Glad you're all seeming to enjoy the game. Uh, happy Tuesday. How's everyone today? I am doing well. Uh, I am doing super well. I adore this game. Uh, I hope you are doing well too. I should follow Florian's advice and go to the Drawfords. Hopefully. Also, we can apologize. We can apologize to Bert for uh, skipping a meal yesterday. Also, let's stop by a quick prayer for to St. Maurice, because, yeah, I need him. We absolutely need uh, St. Moritz's help. Uh, why does Florian need us? Florian just knows that we have medical experience. Alright, go play with your cat. We'll, we'll, uh, I wonder if I can quick find Mousefanger. We, quick. Mousefanger, are you out here? Mousefanger, yes! Also true, big protagonist energy. Look, it is our job, and we are going to do that job to the best of our ability. So, what is this? Oh, the sound coil. Okay, grows so easily some consider it a weed. Still, I think it has a certain charm. Kitty. The sweet baby is in the rain. Yeah, these are all working cats. Uh. There's not a lot of cats as pets in this period, there's a lot of cats as working animals. Uh, there's also not a lot of dogs as pets, but uh, small dogs in the Middle Ages are seen as a pet for nuns and noble ladies. And so you'll get like lap dogs starting to develop in like the 13th, early 14th century, uh, becoming really popular as... Women's pets, but cats, cats are mostly seen as work animals, so, you know. Hello, Master Baller. Uh, they, uh, that's why they have names like, you know, a uh, mouse killer, or mouse biter, perhaps. And s sneaky. Yes! Look, we have, we get the printing again. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. The inking and chunk. How historically accurate do you consider this game so far? Oh, oh. This game is far and away the most historically accurate video game I've ever played. What that means is not only are the material details really, really, really good, uh, but also that they understand the whole chunk really oh god i forgot to remove that oops uh they they understand the entire cultural sphere that these op that this world operates in and all the discourses are going on in this period and do a really good job in translating those into games yeah you love the family with the printer has a different font to everyone else it's phenomenal the print i assume later in the game we're going to see more folks who are print educated but right now Klaus Drucker, our printer, lays out the type in the style of 
Gutenberg metal movable type printing presses, inks it, and then stamps the whole thing. And it's just... Perfect. Good day, Andreas. Back from the Abbey already? It's only noon. Andreas, are you alright? No, something terrible has happened. Oh, God, what's hap- No, forgive me. Come inside and sit down for a minute. My cloak has made a reappearance as well. Yes. So can we all agree that in this contest, the Trip to Cult Totem is expressing support for Vatslav? Absolutely. I think I think that is a completely reasonable, uh, a completely reasonable interpretation is that the, we are all joining Václav is cult, Václav's cult, and uh, we will have very interesting discussions on the primordial nature of the elements uh, and the consequent interpretations of God, good and evil. Not an imposition at all. My friends are always welcome at my home. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. God, Klaus is so cool. You know, of the adult characters, I'm kind of torn between Till, Piero, Gertrude, and Klaus as my favorites. Good day, Andreas. Should I fix you a plate? Also, Bert! We finally see Bert in the, in the flesh. Look at him! Look at him! He's so sassy! I mean, Smokey's base, but said also Sedat and Vatslav are wet, even more based because I love the Ethiopian rap and I love the Romani rap in this game. The baby, she's so sassy and so got such good floof. Also, if I could age as gracefully as Klaus has here, I'd, I'll be very happy. Otto is also great. Look, all these characters are great. Don't make me choose a favorite character, chat. Otherwise, we're just gonna end up listing literally every character. Except Martin and Guy, and Farrakh, and Gerno. But that's neither here nor there. Good day, Andreas. Should I fix you a plate? It's not being the trouble. It would be my pleasure. This rain has got everyone's spirits down. Hopefully a good meal can cheer you up. By the way, also, Lenhardt. Nah. Nah. Is there going to be Jewish rap at some point? I have heard promises that yes, there will be. Uh, not yet, but I've heard, I have heard through the grapevine that yes, there is Jewish rap in this game. Uh, which is also incredibly based. So, uh, you know, the religious diversity is brilliant. The racial and ethnic diversity is brilliant. The, uh... The class diversity is brilliant. Uh, I'm hope I'm hoping we're getting even more gender diversity because we're getting really good kind of uh, feminist discourses that were circulating in the uh, late medieval and early modern periods uh, happening already in the game with like Illuminata and outside of Christine de Pizan, uh, etc. But I'm hoping we get even more of that. Uh, where did we spend our Vandegar? I mean, we're still in our Vandegar, but uh, Andreas uh, went to university in uh, Flanders. So. But we are still currently in our Vandegar. Until we finish our masterpiece and return to Nuremberg, we are officially a, a journeyman, not a master. Hello! Oh, we're good. How are you? Sleepy. Come back to my workshop. I'm going to do a new run of Till Eulenspiel. There was a printing a few years ago in Strasbourg, but it was awful. Almost bereft of illustrations. Oh, uh, if you pick Italy, he mentions the Jews of Venice having their own quarter in dialogue with Florence. Ah, uh, we love that. I mean, we we don't usually use Von de Gara. Uh, in English, right? We'd, we'd still call that our journeyman years, uh, as sort of our best translation, but since the game uses the Vandaya as a, uh, term of art, we're gonna, can, we're gonna adopt that as well for right now. Uh, is this a period where last names were just profession names? Yep. 
Not always, but very often, yes. Also, Tinoispiel is the, uh, is the romance that we saw earlier. Uh, it's very good. What do you think of these new ones? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's good. Uh, I think when you said w where do you spend most of your bonding off, not where did you study? Potentially. I might I might have that wrong. Well, I I try, uh, Shinorio. Uh, I know my brother is practically fluent in German, and I have picked up a tiny bit through osmosis. So, yeah, that's fine. Huh. Might just be your family, but you put Vandega used in common practice. Well, I don't know. I certainly only hear it uh, in academic writing, right? Uh, not that there's a lot of other contexts in which people are talking about uh, early modern journeyman work, um, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, or, yeah, gap years. Anyway, I need to grab things. Um, heck. I can't pull that off the wall easily. We're gonna try anyway, though. Uh, Chad, I have a thing to show you all. Yeah. One of my command strips pulled off with that. I'm gonna have to restick them afterwards. But speaking of early modern prints, I own one. This is 18th century, not 16th. But this is the develop. This is what this style develops into, right? The style. This is a biblical scene, uh, rather than being a uh, narrative scene per se. But I think this is from the 1730s. But yeah, so uh, I think this one's copper plate engraving, while this is a woodcut. But still, uh, the idea engraving and printmaking becomes incredibly sophisticated incredibly quickly. Uh, and the museum where I work at has a really good collection of early modern prints as well, so I can't show a whole bunch. Uh, why did they blame, blame Piero? Uh, he had the knife in his hand when they stumbled upon him. Just, they, they had... He had the knife, he had the knife in hand. It's not great. Alright, we're gonna stick that up again later. I also have another book I should grab. Uh, this is Northern Renaissance art. Let's see if this has anything useful. His full name is Piero Murderer. That makes sense, yep. Uh, as it turns out, I have a lot of relevant books for this as well, right? This is, I think, the third book I've racked on stream. Uh, Craig Harrison's The Mirror of the Artist, Northern Renaissance Art in its Historical Context. I don't think this has a lot on woodcuts, or woodprints per se. It's got a little bit, though. Yeah, it's got, it's got some. It's, it's got some woodprints. Uh, but it, mostly it just is really gorgeously got, like, full-color illustrations. Uh, or full, full, uh, color, high-quality, like, copies of early modern uh, Dutch artworks. It's not just art Dutch, but Flemish, uh, Dutch and Flemish uh, with a little bit of German in here. So another good book rack to see more, more like that. Yeah. We've, there, there's a lot. Turns out this is a really good period for really good art. Um, will say, uh, I don't adore, I don't adore some of the handwork here, but, uh, meh, that's neither here nor there. Um, I think it looks beautiful. Thank you, I'll be sure to let Marie know. Uh, the background's a little bit dense, but honestly it's less dense than most historical ones, but let me check. Manager said it only took you a couple hours to get up to this point. Well, yeah, don't. 
the other thing that I think is a consequence of the digitization. Yeah, okay. Um, let me... What? I mean, well, this one technically is busy. Uh, let me just use this one as an example. It's a bit fuzzy, but you can see how utterly dense. This is a uh, later 16th century. You can see how ridiculously dense the printwork is. So, uh, it's fine. But yeah, if I had to make a criticism here, uh, is that uh, the line work is actually too... It's not dense enough. But that is 100% an issue of representation in the style of the game, not an issue of them not understanding how that works. You need Bird, Ursula, and Paul to be BFFs? True. Absolutely true. But also, that those are top-tier print stuff. I love them. Are these her woodcuts? They are. The drawings were mine, but she did the block cuts. Mwah. 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 <laughs> I've got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the woodcuts and the type. Oh yeah, Ursula's like one. Ursula's very tiny. Bert's older. Wow. Mar Marie being right and co equal, probably not gilded, a female workshop press person. Perfect. 100% historically accurate. A lot of these are family businesses, even in urban settings. Uh, going back into the 13th century in Paris, you have families that are doing manuscript production, both rubrication and illumination work, as the co-owners of workshops. So Marie being intimately involved in the printing process with the woodcut and the typesetting, 100%. Let's go. Bless us, O Lord, and these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. By the way, also shouts to the printed ligatures. They are perfect. Amen. Amen! <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Andreas, what were the bells for the or at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. I'm Perps26, thank you for the follow. I'm glad you all are enjoying this excessively slow playthrough. I am having a phenomenal time just hanging out. Bird is perfect and I will not be debating this. True. Uh, is this eels or sausage? This is sausage. Sausage and bread and cheese and looks like oats. And we love them. Josh loves him some ligatures. Hey, what can we say? Uh, Josh has good taste. Also this... The food art in this game is really good. The bit, the, Lawrence, anyway, Lawrence Rothwell was murdered, something about that. God in heaven, he just rode by here yesterday. Yeah, and it gets worse. One of the elderly brothers I work with in the scriptorium, Piero, was accused of the crime. That's awful. A, mother, a murder in Kyrsal? How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas. The Baron seemed like an interesting man, and now he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? And does the abbot really believe that brother Piero killed him? You've always spoken of him in the kindest terms. Oh yeah, the game invites a slow playthrough. Look, exactly, if the game wanted me to play quickly, it wouldn't continue to be based. <laughs> it seems like Lawrence had been st stabbed. <laughs> I'd rather spare you the details. Uh, I wonder if there's any good scenes of murder or in here. We may need to look, try and find some pr early modern prints of murders, because uh, there are some uh, around the Seven Years' War, or sorry, around the Thirty Years' War. I remember my historical wars, totally, 100%. I'm not a military historian, chat. Don't, ex don't ask too much of me. Nope, I'm um, not seeing a lot of, like, death and murder. Tragic. Um, yeah, there's Bert here. Um, uh, 
But no, I can't imagine Piero did. I can't imagine him harming anyone. This game is so cozy, you're 13 hours in. Oh, uh, excellent. Uh, there is no spoilers because I don't want to be spoiled. Uh, I want to be surprised and delighted. So, just a heads up, right? Do keep spoilers to a minimum in chat. But also, I'm having a phenomenal time. Oh, don't go back on my account. I've had children and even helped Agnes deliver a few. I'm not squeamish. Yes! Blood! <laughs> Ooh, if you can drop that in chat, manager, so we will pull it up. There obviously will be a gore warning, because even in woodcuts, they're pretty fucking brutal. Uh, but yes, if you if you do find that drop a link, and we will take a look. Ah, uh, children. Exactly. Um, there has I have heard advice for teaching kids of uh, weird and gross uh, in both middle school and high school contexts with archival material is 100% the best way to get them engaged with it. So, you know. But if it wasn't Brother Piero, what, who do you think could have done it? I, I did see Lucky Steinauer got into a, get into a shouting match with Warhens yesterday just before I walked by your place. Lucky? Why would he have caused to shout at a nobleman? <gasps> Roiv? And Sausage? Oh, Egg Pasta! Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sausage. Ooh, did we find a thing? Uh, yeah, that, that, that'll do it. Uh, let me pull that over into the correct bunch of material, or set of windows, so we can actually take a look at it. Um, uh, and we zoom in, and then by the power of turning off the game overlay, and then also this one, uh, if it loads, if they continue to load, blah blah blah, a little bit, eh. Yeah, that one will do it. So that's a bit later. Uh, right, th this is this is later, but you can see people are just full on getting stabbed. People are full on hanging from the trees. Uh, you know. Torture of peasants. Yeah. Uh, you know. They, they're not particularly squeamish about just, just illustrating it. Twisted out their eyes, which is terrifying. Uh, raped off their skin with knives, hanging up in the smoke, blood sprouted at the end of their fingers, cleaning their faces, or pouring piss down their throats. You know, um, I'm glad they're not doing that. I'm glad they're not, and I'm glad that they're coloring in the blood as just these red splotches, which is very fun. Uh, it's a very cool way of doing it, and one that I think uh, works really nicely without being too unpleasant. And apparently that was enough uh, to get uh, Azareth to follow, so uh, thank you for that. I, I appreciate the follow. There's probably something else going on that you wouldn't know about here. What do you mean by that? I'm not one to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. Apparently she saw much of Tess. Oh, there's no need for that. Lucky is a forthright man. I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Nah. Oh wow, more death than you thought there were? Oh yeah, no, they're brutal as hell. Hashtag just medieval things? Yeah. Are the egg noodles, uh, spätzle? Probably, maybe, I don't know. Thank you both, that's good advice. There's something else, though. When Lawrence and I were walking, uh, through the me meadow, the widow Kemperin came out of the woods, and... Yes? Well, she cursed him. I'm not surprised. Atelier's late husband, Rannig, fell, fell foul of Lawrence on his last visit to Tassik. I don't remember the details, but Randing died just last year, and Atelia hasn't been the same since. Oh no no. She was always an old bitch, even before she was old. 
Clothes, that's enough. She had to deal with uh, Job's laws in life. And now she lives all alone at the edge of the woods. There are rumors she's going to lose her property soon. I do pity her, even if she is a... Bitter woman. There should be some exception in the law for her to inherit. That seems like it would be more just, yeah. It wasn't always this way. I think my great-grandmother inherited this land way back when. Well, if men changed it, they can change it back. You're right, as always, my dear. Enough about Atelia. Is there anyone else you think may have done it? I don't know if he has any ill intent, but Prior Farrag has been acting strangely since the day Lawrence arrived. Perhaps an academic disagreement? I know they're both avid readers, both of classics and new works. On his last visit, the Baron bought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has some similar interests. But would the Prior kill somebody over a simple disagreement? In the 16th century, this is an incredibly funny joke. Uh, you know, this is, this is the century of Copernicus, and Tycho Brahe, and Galileo, and <laughs> so, you know. The no, well, um, early modern um, scientific figures are not my. There's way more. There's way more names we could name here. Uh, I do not know all of them. But yes, what is an opinion for some is a testament of faith for others, and worth worth killing over, or at least worth censoring all of the books and uh, eventually ordering their destruction. You know. That may be so, but I've never seen that sort of anger in prior Ferric. Not even Gerno was made out of it instead of him. Afterwards, he seemed bitter, but never violent. That just doesn't seem to be part of his character. So, Lucky, the Widow, and the Abbey Prior. Anyone else? There was something strange when we approached the Abbey together. What's early modern exactly? Ah, Refax. What a difficult question to answer. An easy question to say, difficult question to answer. So. The start date is fuzzy, the end date is even fuzzier, uh, but basically, right, the idea is sometime in the late 15th or 16th centuries, there's a fundamental shift uh, in the sort of Western and Northern European cultural space with increased... Um, or a decline in power in the Catholic Church due to various religious schisms, uh, the increased nationalization and professionalization of the military, uh, the uh, changes in the status of uh, social organization away from uh, feudal land-based hierarchies to an increasingly urbanized, uh, increasingly wage-based system of organization, and an increase in uh, global trade networks, thanks in no small part to the influx of uh, silver and natural resources from North and South America, and the consequent development of the transatlantic slave trade. All that emerges around the same time, and are all very interlinked phenomena, and the idea is that this is such a significant uh, cultural, political, and social shift that it uh, marks the end of what we would consider the Middle Ages, itself an extremely fuzzy term. Um, right, depending on, how, on who you ask, it may include the Italian and Dutch Renaissances, it may not. Uh, it may um, start as early as 1453 with the uh, quote-unquote end of the Eastern Roman Empire uh, and the uh, skyrocketing to prominence of the Ottoman Empire 
or end as late as 1550, or sorry, or start as late as 1552 uh, with Henry VIII's succession from the Catholic Church. Both options are actually pretty tenable. Uh, and it continues, some argue as late as the French Revolution, or the American Revolution, or like 17, the Seven Years' War, uh, sometime in the 18th, like back half of the 18th century, uh, is usually when people say the early modern period ends, and then we get something there. Right, Shakespeare and the reign of Queen Elizabeth I is the most stereotypically early modern thing imaginable. Uh, but, uh, you could argue the early modern period ends as late as the golden, as like William and Mary. Like, the English Civil War, uh, uh, still early modern, but like, the Glorious Revolution and William and Mary in an English context, may, even as early as that might be the, like, end of the early modern period bridging into modernity. So, huh. Periodization is a hot goddamn mess, uh, but uh, when I'm using it, think of this as like a fuzzy thing from sometime in the 16th century to sometime in the 18th century. <laughs> that being said, as per last stream, my spicy take is that at least the start of this game is 15th century, not 16th century, despite being set in 1518. So, you know, don't ask me about periodization, because I have hot takes and they are mostly that it is garbage and we measure things in long centuries instead. Exactly. See? He went into an abbey to deal with his great-great-grandfather, uh, I don't know, somebody, so-and-so the murderer, who actually did murders. He just inherited the name, right? Right. Right. Just stuck to calling the periods by the tools they use, like stone and bronze. The, the trick is, uh, that develops after... Calling things stone and bronze and iron age is a later development than middle ages modernity. So, good fucking luck. Or you just do Chinese history where it's ancient until 1840. Absolutely based. <laughs> Absolutely Xehanort brain level text. Uh, you do like mixing up periodizations for shits and giggles. True. You, you mean those Meiji era, era itinerant uh, American warriors? Mother Cecilia, anyway, on with the game. Uh, Mother Cecilia, Mother Cecilia scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. So we are, um, we are continuing to list our potential suspects, which is basically everybody. It sounds like they have a history, at least. Right. Well, I stole it from the Playframe Discord. Uh, don't, don't get, don't give me too much credit here. It is a Xehanort brain tag, but that's just one of the emotes on Dan Floyd's play Playframe server, which is one of my favorite places on the internet. Speaking of Bronze Age, have, we play, have I played Tyranny? I played a little bit of Tyranny. I didn't get very far into it. Uh, just when I played it, didn't, I was also playing Pillars. I didn't have time for two CRPGs. I do own the game, though, so we'll, like, we'll, like, look at that. Well, well, I'll have to take a look at that eventually. <laughs> the accurate story about the Bronze Age class. Uh, I didn't know Mother Cecilia personally, but I've never heard anyone speak badly of her. If she had good cause to dislike the Baron, I must believe she had good reason. Well, Andreas, it sounds like there's a lot to look into. And you, you are always welcome here, Andreas, anytime. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> You're especially welcome with this one. Ah, oh, Look at him go! God be with you, Andreas. Thank you. Be good until I come back, Bertolt. I'll try.
Imagine not having a megaloculture in your country can't be me. True. I have several needs to follow, but where should I start? Could I tell Kaloki stay now, or he's probably working in front of his house. The widow Kemperin lives south of here near Franz Bauer. Prior Fairing is used at the Praetorium, but I won't be able to talk to him until tomorrow. Still, nothing will prevent me from talking to Mother Cecilia in the convent. If I don't attend uh, Brother Florian's examination of the body at the Abbey, he'll have to do it without me. Oh boy. And Mia Klaus departs. Shit. There's so much happening. Oh wait. Sorry, chat. I did it bad. Staub! Maybe about some Marguerite Camp friends? Maybe. Maybe. I will need to see more about Attilia Camp. Camperin. Uh huh. In order to identify that. But, uh, yeah. When are we supposed to be at the Abbey? Now. Where are they Paul's drawings? Speaking of Paul, we love Paul. Wow. Remember, I can pronounce German, um, but I do can't actually, you know, um, translate any of it. I don't actually know German chat. Ask, asking me how did they name the dog XYZ thing? Like, I'm not gonna be able to answer that. I can barely answer a mouse finger, and that's because it's basically cognate with English. Hey, Till. Yeah, times. <laughs> times are <received. laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, uh, let's actually look at the hours. Um, so, there are seven hours in the day, and I've actually remembered them all this time. Uh, and basically, we are following the, uh, the organization of the Benedictine uh, hours as described by various uh, late antique and early medieval texts, including East Dorset Seville and the Rule of St. Benedict. It also happens to be the organization used by the name of the Rose. So, we start the day at Lods. Uh, Lods is a pre-dawn prayer. So you have Lods, and then you have something resembling breakfast, and then you have another prayer at Prime, which is about at 6 a.m. Then you have another prayer at uh, Terce, which is about 9 a.m. Then you have another one at... You have the noonday prayer and then lunch at uh, 6, which is noon. And then you have another one at Nona's, which is 3 p.m. Uh, then you have Vespers at evening, which is roughly 6 p.m. And then uh, the nighttime is complete. So... There's a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, uh, notably, these get fuzzy, right? Uh, we're going to use those pretty strictly uh, as corresponding future and times. But remember, the mechanical clock is a rarity in this period. Uh, they exist, but they are a rarity. And 12-hour uh, or 24-hour time are not universally accepted at this period. Uh, there are clocks going back as early as like the... Uh, 9th century, so like, they're old, but what you are measuring it in is basically split the time between sunrise and sunset into 12, uh, following Roman models, and those are your, that's your daytime. And then you're gonna divide uh, sunset to sunrise into another 12, and that's your nighttime. So, uh, there's actually, right, while nighttime just has this, like, midnight prayer and then lauds, so about that like midnight ish and then at like four in the morning uh in practice this it gets a bit fuzzy and uh there's nominally seven out seven divisions of the night just like there are seven ish divisions of the day uh according to Isidore Seville in his etymologia which is extremely influential well throughout this period uh but yeah you just kind of go by vibes you divide it into 12 and those are your hours, and that's close enough. Alright, so when the sun is at the highest point of the day, you eat lunch and have another prayer. Uh, how does Matthew know when to ring the bells without a clock? 
there's a few different ways. Uh, firstly, uh, if the sun is visible, you can just look at the sun, and you, thanks to long experience, you just know about how long that time is, and then you ring the bells at that time. Uh, the other option, though, is if you know how quickly a candle burns, and you have a pretty good sense of how quickly a candle burns, you get a candle of however long you need. So if you measure three hours, right, you'll get a candle, and you'll mark, it burns this much in one hour, it burns this much in one hour, it burns this much in one hour, and you need an alarm for three hours. Well, you go one hour, two hour, three hour, stick a nail in that, and then light the candle. And as soon as the nail falls out, three hours have passed, you're done. Yeah, same deal, like at night time, you can, count, you can just track the stars to uh, keep track of how quick things uh, how quickly time is passing, and it's easy. So, and so hours are longer in summer than in winter if their division is daytime. Correct, Refax. This is the period where they're starting to standardize, but yeah, uh, in the summertime, uh, especially the farther north you get, the hours do get longer in summer than in winter. That means in Scandinavia, they do not do compline, they do not measure it sunset to sunset, or sunset and sunrise, because that isn't useful. Right, they have to do different organ measurements of when the monastic hours are in Scandinavia because sunset and sunrise are, n are not useful metrics. Hello. Andreas, this way. Of course we're gonna look at this first. There you are. I'm glad the storm didn't delay you. Now, even though I gave instructions that I was not to be disturbed, we must work quickly. Seeing a corpse up close can be unsettling for some. I hope you're up to it. Don't worry, we're good. Oh, oh, we are so good. Look at this. See many animal corpses in the wilds in various states of decay. And ABC Milkman, thank you for the follow just now. Uh, we've seen many animal corpses in the wilds in various states of decay. Human death is also a part of nature. We studied medicine for a while. Uh, and we paged through the uh, fasciculus medicinae and seen its wound illustrations. Quite graphic. Time for medieval golem mode? Ha! <laughs> what medicine? Seeing a dead body is different from examining uh, one directly. We are absolutely medieval goblin mode, and we love it. Now then, you should probably take notes as we go. They might be useful later. Nah, the force. Can you catch us in on what sort of character you made? Uh, we are uh, naturalistic. We study medicine. Uh, we study books, and we study the occult. Uh, we studied in Flanders. I think that's most everything relevant. Uh, we're also being, we're generally ignoring Sangrobian for the sake of not irritating everybody. Oh yeah, no, we are, we are the most nerdy. I will begin by inspecting his anterior, starting with the face and head. No visible wounds, no blemishes. Teeth in good condition, nothing unusual. Uh, I mean, we missed the, um, examining the body. Neck, shoulders, and chest are ordinary. I need to clean some blood away to examine the torso. Yes, there it is. A puncture wound between the 6th and 7th ribs. One, two. Ooh! Ooh! Did they do autopsies in this period? This is a time period where it's kind of spicy. So, yes, they do. Um, but there's, there's a lot of theological consternation around autopsies throughout the later Middle Ages, uh, because on the one hand, they're valuable, right? They're incredibly valuable, uh, but, like, slicing up and doing interior investigations, uh, you'll start, you'll see them in universities, uh, especially in Dutch universities, but... There is some theological consternation because desecrating the body might affect their salvation in the Day of Judgment, and we don't want that. That's bad.
It's fairly shallow, though. I expect I asked my to penetrate only about an inch, and it likely came from his own hand. Wait, what? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Chat. Uh, the script doesn't actually tell us anything objective about the characters. It tells us what Andreas thinks about the characters, which is extremely based. From the angle and depth of the strike, it's as though he were holding in his right hand as he fell on his side. It is. It is an incredibly good uh, running joke. You must know that I was not always a monk. I was a mercenary for ten long years in Poland. Uh, okay, great. We've confirmed that for Florian. He was a mercenary in Poland, which means let's see, early 16th century. He's probably involved with uh, Hanseatic disputes if, if, if he's working in Poland. Uh, probably fighting against uh, Russia. Sweden, Denmark, and a little bit Estonia or Lithuania. So he's probably he's probably being contracted out to the Hans to the Hansa League, or the other option is that he's um a fighting against the Ottomans in sort of the southeastern part of Poland. It's one of those two, right? My familiarity with wounds come from my time on the battlefield. I'm no true surgeon, but I am the closest Kirsau has. If the wound was shallow, that doesn't sound like it could have been fatal. It wasn't. It's likely incidental, received while falling on his own knife. He must have some other wound that issued forth all the blood we found him on. Presumably, it's on his back. N no, that doesn't mean anything of the sort. Who do you think killed him? I don't know. I can't even speculate. All I can do is examine this body and hope that you can figure out the rest. Simply pointing out the implausibility of Brother Piero uh, striking the fatal blow may not be enough to convince the Archdeacon. Brother Piero never should have picked up that knife. I'm sure the appearance of guilt never even crossed his mind. Now then, let's move on. We're gonna just roll it over. Well, there is a story in his sex, probably from the the French. Oh, he has syphilis or syphilis. Yeah, he has syphilis, uh, probably from the French disease. I doubt it had anything to do with his murder. The disease French soldiers received in the brothels of Naples. Yes. How do you know of it? We discussed it in university. Nah, yes, it's spread rapidly, even north of the Alps. So, right, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the transmission of syphilis, uh, but there is increasing evidence that it's circulating in Europe in the Middle Ages. Uh, right, there's a theory for a while that syphilis was like the disease uh, that came from the New World to the Old World. Let's put those in scare quotes, but. Uh, Right, there's increasing evidence in like 14th century bodies that have that syphilis was circulating earlier, so its origins are a mystery, and everyone accuses it be of being from somewhere else. God, that lightning strike is good. The treatment is dire as it involves heavy mercury consumption. Anyway, it seems the bar was, the bear was not the most faithful husband, not uncommon among the nobility. Moving down, other than a few blisters on his feet from what I assume are new shoes, there's nothing wrong with his legs. Andreas, can you help me turn them over? Grant an affirmation stoically. Of course. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I wonder if we're using a paper or a parchment notebook. It could be either, but I'd be, I would expect paper. There is a slight irregularity in his spine, possibly from an old injury. Oh. Ow. Ah. 
Sorry, my back is crunchy, so that was a sympathetic back crunch. <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with how we died, though. It's easy to get injured if you aren't careful, especially if you're in a truly wild and remote place. Did I have extensive medical records on nobility? Uh, n no. Right. Imagine having standardized medical records. Lol. You couldn't be on um, the Middle Ages. Oh, so a lot of this is kind of done ad hoc, right? Where you do the complete examination each time, um, as far as you can. And there was very rarely enough communication to transmit those. Nah. It seems like a silly thing to risk your life for, but I'm not one to talk. Whatever the reason, it didn't contribute to his death. Here it is. A rather dramatic head wound. A dramatic head wound? The dark hair and the blood make it difficult to see, but it's quite bad. In my experience, I've never seen someone walk away from a head wound of this severity. Uh, blowing force trauma? Yeah. I imagine the force of the impact would have to be quite great to crack the skull. Quite right. I see your medical training was not forgotten. I lack the benefit of university study, but the battlefields of Poland and Lithuania. Got it on the first try, chat. Uh, so that means he's probably contracted out by the Hanseatic League, which, uh, right, this is before the formation of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, uh, which means that we're looking at the, Han the trade leagues of the Hanseatic League fighting against probably mostly Sweden in this period. Uh, Sweden's starting to become more prominent and will, well, actually, no, let me scratch that. It's the Kalmar Union in this period. Uh, 1493, uh, right, uh, no, I have that, I have that backwards, uh, is it 13, sorry, 1397, we have the Kalmar Union, uh, in the mid-15th century, uh, we have the, break, Sweden itself breaks away from that, uh, thanks to Eric of Pomerania, so yeah, it could be the, either the Kalmar Union or Sweden, um, as sort of the main antagonist, uh, and then Russia, right? Uh, could be the Teutonic Order as well. They're also meddling in things. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people fighting over the Baltic in this period. Looking at where he got hit, it was a downward swing with something heavy. Well, that was fairly predictable, yeah. Piero's shorter than the Baron, so he needs to be at a height advantage. That's a good hint. Uh, who... But there's not a lot of people in this game who are taller than the Baron. There's, there's not very many characters in this game who are significantly taller than the Baron to get that much force. Uh, Lucky is the obvious choice. Uh, Lenhard I don't think is involved even though he's an asshole. I think he's just an asshole. I appreciate your confidence. Yes, yeah, I mean, Sweden's, right, Gustav Adolphus is 17th century, that's when Sweden really hits the stage, but they're meddling around in the Baltic in this period, still, anyway. The wound looks like it was caused by a single powerful blow from a burnt object, probably no more than four or five inches across. How can you tell? The skull's cracked in a single spot, and there's a clear impression in the skin around it. It would take extraordinary precision to hit the same spot twice, unless the Baron were already dead. Innsbruck hinges? Exactly. No, these, this time it's Nuremberg hinges. Sorry. It's likely he didn't die immediately. How long could he have survived for? Uh, I've seen similar injuries in battle. The victims don't last more than a few minutes, but it's an agonizing death. Even so, he couldn't have wandered far from where the blow was first struck. So he may not have been attacked in the chapter house? 
he was either attacked in the chapter house or someplace in the immediate area. Huh. So he's not outside the abbey because there's no way, there's no convenient way to the chapter house. What's connected to the chapter house? Uh, the cloister and the big garden, right? Because the church isn't connected to the chapter house for strange reasons. I feel like the church should be connected to the chapter house, but it isn't. Um, so I think it's just those two. It's possible, but at an incredible risk. The Abbot's house looks directly looks out directly on the garden. Anyway, whatever killed the Baron was a blunt instrument to consider. And also, it's probably not the church, because I would assume... Right? I would assume that most people would be in the church at that... P right, right after... Like, right after Prime? They may have scattered at that point. No, they've got to be scattered after that point, because the uh, scriptorium had people in it, so they weren't gathered for prayer. But still, right, people may have been lingering around the church after the morning prayer, so the church is incredibly risky. The cloister doesn't connect to a whole lot, though, right? The convent is the other big area, but, right, the, the cloister connects to the... Courtyards and lavatory. Yeah, the church was empty, which is weird. The church shouldn't have been empty. Uh, but yeah, right, we're, when we're thinking about the cloister and not the convent, right, so it's not happening outside the abbey. That's too far away. They have to go through like four doors. Um, The part that impacted him was likely a little smaller than an inch. Or, than a fist. There we go. Could it have actually been a fist? No. Ha. No, I don't think the strongest soldier could do this with a punch, unless the Baron's head were pressed to the ground. Even then, we would also see damage to his nose or forehead. The church was empty because everyone's already in the cutscene zone. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, could a woman or an elderly person have done it? Anyone could have given the right weapon and sufficient height. Whoever did this must have caught the Baron unaware. Save the small knife wound, he has no other injuries. I suppose that he was struck, drew his knife to defend himself, and fell in it before Brother Piero discovered him. There was blood on the wall in the cloister. I didn't notice that. So I believe we discovered two important things. Piero didn't stab the Baron, and even if it did, indeed, though it may take more to convince the Archdeacon of Brother Piero's innocence. And we also know that the Baron was killed by a blow to the head from a heavy, blunt object. Now you just need to find what caused the blow, and learn who struck it. Easy peasy. Oh, there is one other item of interest. I found it in the Baron's jacket, but didn't want to open it without you. of some kind. As I am a caretaker of men, you are a caretaker of parchment. I leave it to your capable hands. What does it say? Das Mächen, das Mächen, das Stab und die Öschelier mit ich. Mit ich. Matutine Capital House. The girl, the girl who died and the innocent with her. Madden's. Chapter. The girl? What girl? And what innocent? Um, one of the nuns? Hmm, it's been years since any of the nuns have died. Perhaps Mother Cecilia would remember. Did anyone die of a botched abortion? Hmm. That is how it's probably going. Um. 
Canopy is all I can give. Someone with an extremely refined hand that's not had any guides, or you don't think it's the French or Flemish will be a Bastardo script. As good as Edoc and Gee are, I don't think they could replicate this. What? Really? If not them, who? I intend to find out. I wish you good luck finding the answer. Now, I'm sorry to rush you, but I must ask you to leave. Every minute you stay here is additional rip. Were you expecting something? Brother Florian, could you open up? It's Werner Stoltz, the physician from Tassing. There is an abortion content warning on the game's theme page. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm in the middle of something. Can you return after supper? I'm afraid I can't wait. Father Gano asked me to examine the Baron's body. Alright, just give me a moment. Andreas, I need you to hide yourself. Of course. Come on. Yes, we're sneaky. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. Oh, Dr. Schnoll, sorry to keep you waiting. Now, what did you need? The abbot wanted me to examine the Baron's body before his life arrives. It seems unnecessary at this point, as I've just completed my own examination. Oh, well, then what's the harm in letting me take a look? Dr. Stoltz, with all respect, I've finished. The cause of death is clear. If you had arrived an hour ago, I would have had no problem with your assistance. Assistance? I'm a university-trained physician. I can examine a corpse on my own without the help of a battlefield sawbones. Regardless of your opinions regarding my abilities, the examination is finished. If you insist on inspecting the body anyway, I must insist that the abbot tells me himself. What? Making me bring the abbot here is a waste of time. So, is performing an examination on this corpse immediately after one was just completed? Idiotic. I'll return with Father Gano presently. Thank you, Schultz. Goodbye, Schultz. Rod. That was close. Now, quickly, leave through the cloister before they return. Of course. Thank you, Brother Florian. Think nothing of it. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, the cod pieces are in this period. Yeah. Like, they're still are mostly hoes. Uh, right, hoes in are without cod pieces are still very po popular, but like, no, they, they still exist. I should find someone to eat with. I got that note out of my head. The girl who died and the innocent with her. Um, I've not, I'm not right up on the scholarship enough to really talk about that wizard, I, so I'll pass to me about that during the week and I'll see what I can pull up. What could it mean? And who wrote it? We seriously need pre- oh. Uh, hello everyone. Hello, Gertrude. God bless you, Master Mama. Oh, she's, she's Dutch. Nice, but... Oh wow, she's super learned. Margareta, Sophie, and Matilda. Master Mother? Yes, it's me, sister. Do you think Brother Piero really murdered the Baron? No, of course not. Oh, then why did Father Abbot have him put in the cell then? He's afraid of what will happen. Do you think the devil could appear here at Kyoso? Oh, oh, we are going full name of the rose here. Uh, this is like, this option right here is straight up just, uh, William, something William of Baskerville says to Abso in the name of the rose, and it's fine. As bad you think the abbot did this? He is a contender. My, we didn't list him, but, um. I suppose, why? I didn't see the devil, but I think I smelled his odor. 
Last night, I woke before matins, and I smelled something in our dormitory. It was strange, moss and sulfur mixed with frankincense and roses. It moved through the room. I wanted to scream, but I was too frightened, and then it was gone. Oh, we had a reputation, right. I actually do remember this. Uh, Miller's, right, rep the reputation for cheating people includes mixing sawdust into the flour. Uh, right, there's regulations in England in the 14th century about this. Uh, they, they mix, they puff up the flour extra uh, by putting in sawdust and other nasty things. So, big bread fraud. Did the Baron smell like roses and frankincense? Yeah, I'm really worried about that. I'm really worried about that. I'm ashamed I didn't cry out, but if I didn't know what to do. That's small comfort, but thank you. Thank you, Sister Margretta. God bless you, Master Mahler. Right, I'm really worried. Right, chat, we don't have confirmation on this yet. But I am really worried that the the guest house they can eat in the guest house. I can eat with I can eat with Smokey and um, Vatslav. Chat. This is an objectively suboptimal play, but I can eat with uh, Vatslav. And, uh... You know what we're about to do, right? You know the odds that we are just going to waste all of our time uh, talking to Vatslav and not being useful. Oh wait, we're here. Of course we'll be able to smoke in Vatslav, it's obvious. Look, it's not my fault that I'm really... that I do love... uh... our big heresy friend. Can I... I do want to talk to Cecilia. Yeah, were we invited somewhere? I feel like... Oh, good. Cecilia is not here. Damn it. Alright. Exactly, we can't get into the monastery to eat with Sabbat. Hi, Hildegard. We're just gonna vibe with Hildegard for a moment. Okay, we're good. The four Maddens. Also, yeah, were we invited to eat with anyone? We should probably check if we were invited to eat with anyone. That feels important. Um, find someone to share supper with. Lace Hall may or may want to speak with me. Yeah, we seem to be okay. Michlaus. Uh huh. Talk with Lucky. Widow's Curse. A cult hands, uh, Baron and Nun. Yeah. Okay, those are just our leads. Eh, yeah, we could. We could eat in the guest house, you're right. Uh, that's probably more optimal. Aw, just hello, Master Mala. Uh, but. I want to hear more about our Romany friend. Thoughts, love. Uh, hey, Master Mala. Did you need something, Master Mahler? Look, we, we'll, we'll eventually meet other people and talk to people. I want to see more Harrison. I, are you sure? Yes. Well, but I suppose you're welcome. It's all right with you, Vatslav? I suppose. 
All right, good, good. Bless us, oh, uh, Lord? That's probably Lord. Lord, and these are gifts which we are about to receive from your bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a mutual meal. Thank you for the hospitality. Of course, we're glad to have you. How else will Václav get his town gossip? Stop, I don't. All right, all right, I was only kidding. I don't sing gossip or otherwise. Snooky is, it's a stupid joke, don't worry about it. Don't sulk about it then. Aw. Mountain cheese. Om nom nom. In truth, I'm the gossip, Master Muller. I can't carouse with proper people, but I like to know what's going on. I just... If you tell me some of your gossip, I'll tell you some of mine. That sounds reasonable. Fairing, the prior of Kirso, has a special interest in magic. The Hungarian? He has more than an interest. I... Ah, never mind. Forget I said anything. Now tell him the whole thing, Václav. Tell him what you saw. Do it! A few weeks back, I saw that man, the Hungarian, in the woods. He was doing some kind of ritual with blood. That's not a good sign. Black magic? Well, I don't care what color it is. It sounds bad to me. Whose blood was it? This. He cut his hand in the middle of the ritual and dripped the blood into a cup, I think. He kept repeating some phrase over and over. Uh. Sex Luke's. Tedarior? Oh, um, Sex Lucas. Uh, Luchus. Right, Luke's is probably Luchus. Um, so what? Um. Yeah, I'm not. Look, probably, probably Mr. Aladdin is difficult. Um. Something from. And presumably Tenebrae. Uh, right, being shadows. Well, I don't mind people have strange beliefs. Let people do what they want. Is that. It means light from darkness? Yeah, yeah. I just don't like blood. What's inside the body should stay inside. Are they just used to this diet? Because subsisting off of just straight cheese and beef dressing sounds like it would be a terrible time. Uh, I presume they get carbs when they can, but... Oh no, you have to work. You have to talk to Lenhard if you want carbs here. So you know. Work through. Oh, heck yes. Yeah, to do the bidding of the practitioner. That sounds bad. You heard anything else lately? Uh, how about the murder? Does the murder not come to mind? Good. Gossip makes trouble, and it can get people hurt. Why do you become such an old woman, Václav? You're no fun at all. No one's getting hurt. We're just telling stories. All right, then. What have you heard? Well, I mean, it is sadly because we like potatoes. Um, uh, but we are a potato-free zone in this game playthrough. And uh, good on Josh Sawyer for making it that way. Well, the good brothers and sisters of the Abbey may have the townsfolk fooled, but not old Smokey. They get up to all sorts of things in these woods. Josh had a whole thing about no potatoes. I, I saw on Twitter that he had very rigorous no potato policies. Smokey. 
Oh, please. No one around here cares if I live or die. They sure don't care about what I say to people. We are pro-16th century Bavarian potatoes. Look, by the end of the 16th century, you can have Bavarian potatoes. But in 1518, no potatoes. Uh, yeah, we should have turnips, though. We should have turnips or beets would be the two. The two that I would expect to see more often uh, as our carb when we can't be getting bread. Uh, turnips and beets would be, and carrots, would kind of be the ones I would expect to be seeing uh, supplementing a meal. Until they do. Fine, say what you want. You know that monk and nun who do the shopping in town? Brother voice love and sister Matilda? Oh, I haven't seen any carrots yet to see if it has rainbow carrots. Well, they do more than shop together. They meet in the woods, sometimes, where no one can see. No one except old Smokey. And do the things adults do, you understand? Okay. That's that's some hot gossip right there. Wah. Wah. Magnificently hot gossip. We do love it. Pickled everything is peak Central Europe, exactly. Uh cabbage. Cabbage is the other the other vegetable we should see a lot of. Because we love our sauerkraut. <laughs> I don't love sauerkraut, but it's fine. Yeah, it is April. Well then, don't tell them. It's not like any of those folks are going to come down here and talk to me. Sister Gertrude talks to you. Gertrude is friendship. Well, yes, but other than her. You heard anything else lately? No. We heard a murder! Andreas! <laughs> what do you mean you haven't heard anything? There was a murder! No matter, there's plenty more to tell. Well, the whole town's built on Roman ruins, right? A piece of an old town sitting underneath the abbey, too. Hundreds of years ago, the Romans built all sorts of things up here. Then one day, they just vanished. Murder isn't gossip. Murder is peak gossip. What are you talking about? Murder is perfect gossip. We build on their own bones. You still have to be careful when you step in this forest. You're liable to fall into an old ruin. Or you get scared halfway to the grave by a ghost. So, the the salt mine. Does the salt mine enter a Roman ruin? Are we about? Are we going to break this case wide open using the salt mine? Tunnel from the crypt to by the Miller's house. That's that'd be spicy right there. Smile. <laughs> Thank you, AC. <laughs> it's true. Smoke. Sun. I saw a ghost too. Hey, we, we saw a ghost too. Ooh, I love ghost ghosts. As do I, but this is no story. It was late in the evening. The moon was high, painting the leaves all soft and silver. And I heard it rustling in the meadow like wind through the grass, like whispers. I looked up. Quote the Final Fantasy fourteen added, just smile better see it's a spoiler. True. I heard rustling in the meadow like wind through the grass, like whispers. I looked up. This is my favorite part. This is good. And there he was, standing in the meadow like he'd carved out of moonlight, bent near in half. He looks at me and is like I've been speared straight through to my soul, just these two eyes like dark pools pouring right into me. And his edges, the borders fill, they shimmer. So hard it hurts to look straight at him. I can't help it. I blink. Like God himself closed my eyes. This chill wind blows through me, the very breath of winter. And when I look back, these can know. And then we have almonds for dessert. I love that story. So, a weird guy looked at you. Is that the whole story? By the way, this is also Super Name of the Rose. It's not my... I, don't, I still don't know how to feel about this, but right, the idea of, oh, there was a ghost story, and it's actually, you know, uh, if we bore down in a bit, it's a guy looked at you. 
Oh, maybe you really... Anyway, these ruins are haunted. Alright, Smokey, I have to get back to sharpen the knives for the Aldens. Alright, alright, enough talking. Good to see you, Master Mauler. Drop by again sometime. Till next time. Aw, there was significantly less uh, heresy than I hoped for. <gasps> There's an owl! Oh, chat! Yes, I know we should get some sleep. Chat! Look at them. Look at them. They're perfect. They're not as perfect as our owl, but they are perfect. There's an adult owl, owl for screenshotting. But yes, let's let's get the let's get the baby Froofy owls. Uh, that'll be a screenshot. And that'll be a screenshot. Owl, owl. Oh, that's another good owl. So many good owls. I think that's all of our owls. Salt mine. We should not be wandering around the salt mine at night. That's a bad plan. But, uh... Oh no. There is another owl. Oh, look at it. Oh, look at it on top of the salt mine. The small gray one. He's so shook. I love them. I love, I love that the universal pre-modern idea of the owl is what if bird but incredibly distressed because our emote is Southeast Asian and it still is just that, that is what an owl looks like. It is universally acknowledged that that is what an owl looks like. Chat, as we are just running back, uh, I do want to remind you all that in it, if you have been enjoying this, do consider subscribing for the channel, and if you have Twitch Prime, it is free. Uh, gets you an ad-free viewing experience and helps an awful lot to help make games like this, uh, or make playthroughs like this, I should say, possible. Uh, but furthermore, if you want to also support the channel, remember chatting and just hanging out using channel points all boost us in the algorithm. So, it makes us more discoverable on Twitch, brings new friends over in. Uh, also, just to quickly check, are Tassing and Kiosal real places, or are they Game of Sousa locales? They are fictional! Uh, but that is okay. Exactly. And Blues has now... Um, uh, helped us out by redeeming a spicy take. The spicy take is that I think I know uh, why this game's world feels so alive, right? I don't think it's spicy to say that this game's world feels really intensely alive. I think it is spicy. Unfortunately, we still can't get into the church uh, today, I think. Oh god, Wolfie, uh, putting the pedal to the metal there with 10 gifted subs. Thank you, Wolfie, as always. It is incredibly appreciated. Uh, and very hype of you. And Ill Peter is doing that. And everyone's sleeping, look at them. But yes, uh, I think I know why this game's world feels so alive. I really should clean this up. If you want me to elaborate, it's going to cost me a little bit more than that. As we go to bed, I have our very sweet things. Now a little stretch and do that. All right, we'll, we'll be smart and this. And there it is. Oh, we have 
more spicy takes, and a design diatribe. Oh god, there's so many spicy takes. Alright, chat. And we'll... We'll take... Good lord! You gave me just about seven... Okay, okay, I got, I got the memo. I got the... I got the memo! <laughs> Let's see, we got another spicy take, and another spicy take, and another spicy take. Oh god, it just keeps going. Wait. Where do they where do they go? Let's see. One, two, three, four, four, four more spicy takes, uh, and a design diatribe for me to elaborate. Alright, alright, jeez. <laughs> Firstly, let's see what Ursula wants. Stare at this child. And a compliment. The compliment is that children in this game are perfect. Good mor- Oh. It's not morning. Yes, my name is Adam. It's the middle of the night, Ursula. She's perfect! So- Four spicy takes, a compliment, and we, we will do some of those spicy takes as other actually spicy takes. But I need to know, I need to uh, adore this child a little bit more before we explain, okay? What are you doing up here? Oh? Wow. I see. I don't see. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Would you like me to tell you a story? Will that help you sleep? Eh. Have you read the story of the cat and the cradle? Far up north, in Flanders, where Lionheart's Mill uh, came from. Don't please hurt the, this dude! You, you are a bad influence on these children. Absolutely. Uh, do not read her the Picatrix. <laughs> the town by the sea. A hundred years ago, there was great blood there. On the feast of Saint Elizabeth. The mother of John the Baptist. She came pregnant in old age after it was foretold by the... Oh, there's a bug there. After it was foretold by the Archangel Gabriel, I believe. Uh, you know how mad your dad gets when the water comes through your farm? Well, it was like that, but much worse. If your dad saw St. Elizabeth's blood, he'd probably lose all his hair on the spot. The waters rose so high that everyone had to leave their town. Many families lost their homes. When the flood waters went down, the townsfolk went to look for survivors. Would you believe that they saw a baby's cradle floating in the water? I know, it's strange credulity, but it's about to get even stranger. There was a cat on the cradle. It was jumping back and forth to keep the waves from getting in. The townsfolk couldn't believe it, so they slowly rode their way out to the cradle. When they looked inside, what did they see? But a tiny baby, warm and dry. Gah, Anyway, that's why they named the town Kinderdijk. Makes more sense if you know Dutch. Do the writing mistakes become more often when he's tired or upset? I think so, but it's not clear. It's it's not clear. Alright, so we now have a quadrillion channel points all spent on the same question. So, uh, if this is your first design diatribe for very many people, I have uh, right next underneath the game here. Over in our thing, we have... Uh... A Google Doc. The story is different depending on where Andreas is from. That makes a lot of sense, uh, but it's great. Uh, the time does not pass if we don't move. We have to do things that pass time, otherwise we'll just hang out. Uh, which, by the way, uh, this, I guess arguably is spicy. Um, I mean, it's very persona a bit. Uh, but, right, uh, one of the other, uh, Right, Sarah L. Jackson, who I've uh, streamed with recently, uh, also a Twitch streamer, deal working in history and medievalism, likes a term called accidental accuracy, 
Uh, this is a case of being, I think, accidentally accurate because, right, the, the arrows are super loose, right? They expand and contract as the day goes on. And so the idea of, like, a super rigid passing of time, like, isn't a thing in the 16th century. So the idea that we are just kind of hanging out, wandering around, able to do way more than three hours of stuff in a three-hour block, very good. Anyway, we've got a Google Doc right here. And so the core question is, why does a uh, tasseling slash curacao feel so alive? Right. I think it's not controversial to say that the characters in this are incredibly fun, right? They are all incredibly lively, uh, and there's a lot going on that s says, right, we already really care about them, we immediately fall in love with them, we've got a lot uh, of fun stuff happening. The question is, right, realistically, uh, this is not the only game to try and do this. Right? Kingdom Come Deliverance tries to do this. Assassin's Creed games try and do this. They have these far more people involved, right? Not many more people involved, much more developed uh, animations, personalities, longer quest chains, much bigger scope of game. And yet, a spicy take wrapped in is that none of those games are anywhere near as successful as this. So, the question is, right, why? The answer, I think, is that this game is perfecting something that I've really only seen done well in one other game, sort of. Right? So, my argument... Pentiment is a new category of medievalist game that can be described as a micro-historical simulation. This is, this is a lot of jargon. Let's break it down. So, firstly, when you start with uh, what are the games that are failing, I think we can group them into two broad categories, right? Uh, lift review wall. Uh, two big categories of games. One. Big, uh, world simulation. Ah, let's make it three big categories, right? Big world simulations, open world, uh, uh go anywhere, do anything. Come Deliverance, Skyrim, Witcher, two, uh, linear, uh, traditional, narrative, tight focus on protagonists. Like that. Three. No protagonist, a uh, big sweep of history. Right? They, these are kind of the big things, right? Right, the, these are our three big categories of games. I think that's fairly uncontroversial. I think it's also uncontroversial to say that Pentiment is none of these. Pentiment is absolutely none of these. Uh, so, uh, my, if we go into our historical game studies theory, we see uh, 1 and 2 get grouped together as a very uh, realist simulation, where the focus is portraying the world as it is, uh, on a very microscopic, granular level. Uh, and then, this is known as what's called a conceptual simulation, where the point is that we're doing a bunch of big discussions of stuff. Oh, Skyrim, Skyrim absolutely counts, right? Skyrim and Witcher absolutely count in our historical uh, things, because they're using a very, a very rich body of historical references, uh, despite the raw narrative and world itself being fictional, right? Skyrim is a Viking game. It just is. Uh, regardless of the other lore being brought in, uh, its core aesthetic is fundamentally historical medieval Scandinavian. The, the academic literature of Skyrim is probably the most studied medieval Scandinavian game. So, we gotta, we gotta work with what we've got. Exactly, it's, it's in dialogue with real world history. But yeah, 
Pentiment is none of these. Um, so, instead, what it's trying to do? Uh, well, Conan games destroy his country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Conan uh, depends a little bit on the game, but right, Turtle War, right, Turtle War is a kind of weird space in here because it's kind of this in that it's a strategy game, but it also has you know richly rendered individual battles like these games do. Um, but yeah, Conan, absolutely. Uh, it depends a bit on where it sits within each game, but yes. Point is, Pentiment is none of this, right? Uh, and so, why do I use the term micro-historical here, right? Let's take a look here for this other half, because uh, if this is a realist historical simulation, this is a conceptual historical simulation, I argue Pentiment is a micro-historical uh, simulation. Let's take a look over here. Let's look at what books that they're using. Durer's Journey. This is secondary literature in that it is scholarship about someone, uh, but it's using a single set of objects. Uh, Durer's Travel Journeys. Faithful Executioner. Fascinating bit of micro history looks at the life of a single executioner, Franz Schmidt, who lived in 16th century Bavaria. Return of Martin Guerre. Uh, is uh, technically fiction, but uh, is very historical fiction, but it's based on the court documents uh, of Jean Corras about the trial of La Rateau de Modern Guerre. Peasant Fires, the drummer of Nicholas Halsen, right? A single 1476 uprising and a single person, uh, Hans Böhm. Right, it, it's not entire, like, it's not just retelling, uh, Magistrissa, it's not just retelling the court documents, right? It is doing narrativation work, and so it's very, very, it's right on that borderline of what I th say, uh, is historical fiction versus just secondary narrative. Cheese and the Worms is the original micro-history. Name of the Rose, historical fiction, but still a micro-history. Literally everything on this reading list are micro-histories. Uh, so, let's just note this. Uh, micro-history, uh, genre of historical writing that uses a single uh, person, place, event, or document to um, analyze a broader historical movement or era. That is how I would define microhistory. There's probably some disputation uh, possible in here, and that's fine. Uh, game volume is too loud. You know what, you're saying you don't like the pigs? Fine. Uh, let's, let's turn them down quite a bit then. We'll turn it back up in a bit. That's maybe too low. Where do they go? Alright, that's better. Um, but yes. We, uh, this is an excellent thing. Um, we love micro histories because they're super accessible and also can be really rigorous. Uh, notably, not the same as biography. If I had to do uh, these separately, um, right, or if I had to describe what makes them different, Right, a biography is about one person and the ripples that their movement through historical space causes. A microhistory looks at one person and how, what ripples they are interact or intersecting with. Right, what runs into them? And they have agency in this, right? They, they can steer their little boat around, but it's what's running into them, what movements are they engaging with? And these are super fun, right? Everything on the reading list is micro-histories. So, what this suggests is that we are actually working in, right? It suggests to me that what we are doing is we are laying the groundwork in these early moments of the game for a whole bunch of micro-histories. Some of these are explicitly borrowed from these texts, right? The Return of Martin Gare uh, and Cheese and the Worms, I think, are just going to be showing up throughout this game with specific characters. But, 
they're using a lot of historical documentation to talk about people, right? Right? Uh, to talk about um, people that fit into broader cultural trends. So we're able to do gender history. We're able to do class-based readings. We're able to discuss religious different, uh, religious and ethnic differences. Uh, we're able to uh, discuss folk religion. Uh, we're able to discuss illumination culture, book culture. Uh, we're able to discuss folk tales. Uh, we're able to discuss um, interactions and understandings of Romanitas. We're able to do a lot of very erudite stuff and very lay stuff at the same time through all these characters, right? So my argument is that we are currently laying the groundwork for a bunch of micro-histories that are going to evolve and intersect. And these are based on really rigorous understandings of the different types of... Uh, uh, how to phrase this? The various like types of lifestyles that are possible in this period and that we are... Right, because there are avenues, there's individual agency, but there's also, we're socialized into certain trends, and they're representing those trends. And children's history, right? Children's history is another one that they're bringing in here. So we're getting a bunch of intersecting micro-histories uh, that are concerned with different aspects of the early modern cultural experience that are all going to intersect with each other. It's... That's really smart. There is exactly one other game that uh, does this uh, that I am aware of. If you have others, please do throw them. Please do throw them in. But that is, I think, the other game that needs to be mentioned here because there's a lot of fundamental mechanical similarities, right? Uh, Uh, limited rural town environment, uh, small cast of really fleshed out characters, uh, talking punctuated by minigames. This word mine's different, um, right? Both these, those are both good shots, but those are you fundamentally like doing things differently because right pathologic has a lot of other mechanics and this war of mine has a lot of other mechanics but the closest mechanical match uh to pentiment is far and away as far by the 1945. but there's a difference here uh what makes pentiment better and different from Svoboda by the 1945 um is that Svoboda by the 1945 is in looking at oral history uh right uh, if you don't know, uh, Svoboda 1945, made by Charles Gaines in Prague, uh, is set in the early 2000s uh, about the events in a town in 1945. Right? Uh, so, this is looking very much at an oral history. Right, we are a non-character, right? The player character in Svoboda 1945 is a non-character that is doing oral histories in order to illuminate something uh, about the, the truth about this town and then make a determination about the historical value of its schoolhouse. Pentiment innovates... Uh, by adding Andreas, right? Andreas is his own micro-history, right? We're playing our own micro-history among a host of micro-histories, right? Sure, uh, Night in the Woods actually is a good shout here as well. Um, but yeah, right? Andreas being a very fleshed-out character in his own right uh, does some really lovely things, uh, 
with generating our own micro, micro history that lets us bounce off of other people. And so we end up with this big nest of micro histories that are all going to play off each other in interesting ways and illuminate different aspects of the period that makes this geographically and temporally fairly tightly scoped game representative of a half a century either direction over a much larger geographic area. And there's some things of this that are culturally specific uh, that are not going to elaborate out, but there's a lot of things that will. Uh, Svoboda 1945 is set in a fictional town, uh, but it is uh, based, the game uh, you, is filmed in a real town, uh, and the, they hired actors to portray all the characters. Right. But yeah, so uh, let me also make a note here, by the way, shout outs to one mechanic. Right, the work we do as an illuminator is not a mechanic in the game. Everything is tied into the social world, uh, right, the social world that the game uh, intersects with. Right, those aren't the same thing. Uh, so, right, our job is not a mechanic uh, in this game. How we make money is not a mechanic in this game. Uh, this is an intensely socialized world, and a world that really wants you to engage with all these different people and micro-histories. Yes, uh, it does mean freedom. I think, uh, I think they translate as liberation uh, for the game. But yes. Yes, I think that's where we're leaving off here. But yeah, that's my postulation as to what makes this world feel so alive. I mean, there's a lot of sound design stuff. There's a lot of animation stuff, and there's a lot of small things like, you know, the presence of children that do a lot of good for us. But at its core, I think, I think it's that it's adapting a specific genre of history that is really, really, really well suited to this sort of uh, historical setting and historical game style, uh, and just broadly for adaptation into games as a medium. And then it is running with that with every character and setting up a lot of different stories that I assume are all going to advance and bounce off each other as we go forward. Right? Chat, do feel free to agree with me here, but that is my take on this design diatribe uh, about why Pentamin's world feels so alive. Now, uh, game audio goes back up as we finish. Uh, and let's go downstairs. Hey, Ursula. And the... <laughs> Ursula's perfect. And now for four... Hey, I, I redeemed... I redeemed another one of those spicy takes during it. Which is that Pentiment is better than... What, uh, Pentiment's world feels more alive than games are much more... Um, larger and nominally more diverse and more present. Hey, Eva, what's up? Hello, Andreas. Morning. I hope the day is treating you well. Well enough, though there's too much to do and not enough hours to do it all. The storm made such a mess of the town, and there's the leaks in the roof at home. Then there's all that wool. Lord. But what's this about wool? The ewes are near the lambing, so we cheered them all last week. We must have spent ages washing all that wool. Have you ever smelled wet, dirty wool, Andreas? There's nothing worse. Now that it's clean, we've got to spin it, and that takes an age on its own. Lord, I don't know where I'll find the time. Surely you won't be doing it all yourself. Uh, sometimes I forget you are from Nuremberg, Andreas. Clara, Hedy, Veronica, Kat, even little Ursula will be there, though she makes mischief more than she helps. True. I don't know that I've met all these people. At least the work goes quickly with the women working together. Lively conversation helps pass the time. Uh, 
sometimes we even get visitors. What kind of visitors? Sometimes the men in town will come back to say hello. Peter, you're perhaps even Otto. I have, I just haven't, I know, I've been playing too quickly, T-Shift. That, that's clearly the problem. I've been playing too quickly, uh, not going everywhere I can at every possible moment. And I visit? You're welcome to come. I'm sure the others would be glad of your company, too. Johann Bauer will be there to keep an eye on us. As long as you stay outside, I can't see what time your visiting would be. I wonder... I... I mean, I hope he has more uh, historical games. I'll consider it. Come on, everyone will be glad to see you mingling with the regular folk. I do have a murder to investigate. Hetty especially. She worries you think too highly of yourself. We meet at Johan Bauer's home. Come by in the morning or afternoon and speak to Johan. I should get back to work. It was a pleasure running into you, Andreas. And this dude, thank you for the two uh, gifted subs as well. Oh, I hope we see you, uh, I hope we see you the spinning bee, Andreas. That looked like a typo. Exactly. This is true. How better to know about murder than Gospel Housewives? True. Um, is this the era when women are working draw spindles? Uh, has the spinning wheel been invented yet? I believe the spinning wheel has been invented yet. Let me take a look at that. Uh... Spinning wheel, 15th century. They're probably both exist uh, in this period. Bible. Yeah. Do 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 do. do. Yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, it looks like drop spindles are still showing up in art from the period. Uh, so if we yank over this way, oh, wrong one. Yank over this way, right? But I mean, this is, well, stylistically, it looks like 15th century. But yeah, right, I suspect both uh, exist in some places. In this period, like Iberia might have spinning wheels, but uh, rural Bavaria might not. Uh, but regardless, right, drop spindles are still being used. So, I think it combines all the way. Andreas. Well, Peter. God bless you. Hey, Andreas. All the urine involved in wool, leather, and dying. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it reeks. I've been I've been to Moroccan uh, leather tan or leather tanneries and dyeing uh, vats, and they reek. Schmidt. No, Andre. No, dang it. Game. Uh, I mean, were you here for the? Hello, Andreas. I mean, were you here for the entire design diatribe? Because uh, otherwise we explain micro-histories. And I think... Persuasively. Does this say anything as to what's going on? Alright, the spinning bee. But who would have wanted to kill Lawrence? Okay, you heard it in the background. Uh, in short, micro history is good. Uh, more games should use like academic micro histories as a base because yeah. Okay, uh, who should we who should we go bother, chat? Chat, who should who should we go bother? Hi, Otto. Hey, Andreas. You think we should uh, go be gossip? I think, and then Sabot. Old lady Atilia. Go out of Verna. 
All right, Dildrum. We are close to the end of the stream anyway. Uh, I have... 33% battery left, so you know. Uh, and ABC Milkman, thank you for the Prime subscription. I super appreciate the support. Uh, it helps a lot. Should be able to look at the grave from the first... Ooh. Oh, yeah. No. We're going up to the Abbey, then. Enjoy all of your medieval emotes, uh, by the way, because you get access to a bunch of the finest curated medieval uh, funny marginalia for your viewing pleasure all over Twitch. Also, Klaus. Hello. Morning, Andreas. And another Hail Hydra. Thank you all for making me take care of myself. It is appreciated. Have I been to the mill? I have been to the mill. Uh, Lenhart's a bastard, and I hate him. That being said, uh... Nope, come on. Elsa. Elsa. Hello, Master Mole. Staub! Staub! Hey, Paul. Hello. Lenhart. Jerk. Tell. All right. Well, let's peek through the forest. Uh, and make sure no one's doing anything too spooky. Oh, hey. Dang it, I want to talk more religion. I want to talk religion more. Boo. Good to see you, Andreas. Oh, perfect. Did I pick them okay? You think Saint Satya would like them? They're perfect. She'll like them very much. That's a beautiful bunch of flowers, Bert. Do you... Yes! <laughs> I like the purple ones most. Are they Kalama? Ooh. Ooh, irises and snowdrops. Ooh, we love them. Are you leaving them for St. Satya? Birdie's flowers, yes. And the last of the fall's apples. Many of our store rotted when the spring damp came, but not this one. It seemed appropriate to bring it here for her. Do you know the story of St. Satya, Andreas? Children doing folk religion. Look, Bert thinks she's a saint, and we're just going to ignore the fact that she's clearly Roman. Also, Bert's hat is perfect. Want me to say more? The hand that held the Holy Lands! She's very dear to us. As dear as the famed St. Moritz, though not as widely known. Nod. I should have I should have heard her thoughts. Tassing is blessed to be founded on a great trade road on fertile land, close to the Lord here in the Alps. Sus. This was once a pagan village. St. Moritz, snowed in during a bad winter, brought the town to the Lord with the aid of, aid of St. Satya. Satya was the daughter of the town leader, the first of the pagans moved to convert. She led St. Moritz to a spring, and when he baptized her, the earth grew lush, green, rich with fruit. Yep, definitely St. Satya and definitely not Mars. Yep, or definitely St. Moritz and definitely not Mars, I should say. Apples, presumably. And pears! Well, just because she has Roman pagan origin doesn't make her last a Christian saint. True. Saints are saints. Yes, sweet. Pears, gooseberries, currants, apples, and other fruit native to places Satya had never been. Moritz and his starving men were saved by this miracle, and the town was brought to Christ's side. In a way, we were all saved that day. What happened to Satya in the end? She was martyred for her faith. But I feel like she's still with us still. Don't you, Bert? In the tree! The... The tree? Grown from an acorn fallen off the tree that provided the kindling for Satya's pyre. Through God's grace, she is always here with us working her miracle. Yes! Posthumous not recognized miracles! Yes! 
And that is a perfect miracle. Right, that is a top tier miracle right there. She seems very important to you. It's through her work and the Lord's grace that I have the life I do now. I owe all the joy in my life to her. How do you mean? When Klaus and I first married, we struggled for years to start our family. I was distraught. I wanted a child desperately. I brought an offering to Saint Satya and prayed to be touched by her miracle of life. And we were blessed with birth. Perfect. Yes. Correct. Good. This is, I mean, that is a proper canon of miracles right there. We got the, we got the miracle up before her conversion. We've got the miracle on her martyrdom. And we've got the long, we've got the miracle uh, in the same vein as Saint Elizabeth giving birth to John the Baptist. Like, that is, that is the proper canon of miracles. If you're going to pick the three genres for a hagiography, this is it. Also, it's delightful. Bird is a miracle. I came from the tree. That explains your wild disposition. <laughs> My little scamp. It's been some years since birth and we are struggling again. I'm hoping that Satya and the Lord will once again bless us with a child. Perhaps a daughter. I hope that for you and Klaus as well, Maria. You are wonderful parents. Thank you, Andreas. You're a good man and good friend to my husband. We shouldn't keep you here any longer. I hope you found peace here with us and with Saint Satya. Until later, M Maria. Until later, Bert! Until later! I love how excited- I love that they can't do the ink splatter of that he is overhyped all the time because this is printing, and so they just do a wiggle. It's perfect. Tree Bert. They're perfect. I love them all so much. No, please do be quiet. Uh, we will see Act 2 when we see Act 2. Uh, but I, I wish them the best. Alright, we're allowed back into the Abbey. Uh, we've got lots of people to talk to. Oh, we have... Fürchstedt! <laughs> Oh, look at him! He's got a beard! Oh, he's got a beard! He's the perfect puppy! No, that's slander! The doggo did not kill the bear, and the doggo does nothing wrong. The, do the doggo has done no crimes in his life. Listen, if he killed the bear, then the bear deserved it. Well, that's fair. Uh, I, now, Mousefanger, well, Mousefanger might have killed the Baron, but in which case the Baron deserved it. Oh, we just can't talk to you. But yes, um, I believe that that is the Baroness. What's this? A letter to the Baron from Prior Faring? Baron Kofferl, trotz eurer wiederholten Aufforderungen und unterschwelligen Drohungen, Der Inquisitor in Innsbruck meiner äh, Seelwortheiten zu offenbaren, werde ich bei eurem Besuche Kurs auch keine Rituale für euch durchführen. Wait, what? My God! Lawrence was blackmailing Faring to get him to perform some kind of cult ritual. Yeah, sorry. I'm only getting snippets of... I'm only getting like very tiny snippets of this German because it's not not my not the language I know very well. But um, a small ritual for something in Curacao. Um, um, doing a small ritual in Curacao is concerning. Bitte beende dieses törichtes Leben. Sofort zum Mörder und zur Arbeiter. Seele. Sometimes CH. Uh, doesn't it dialectal variants? Like, I know I know in, in Berlin dialect refax, right, that you have sch, uh, and, right, that you have, uh, a much softer, like, ich, rather than ich. 
But I know like Swiss Swiss German keeps ich really strongly. <laughs> you just realized early today what that ritual is supposed to be. Oh boy. Uh, we'll see if we can't figure it out, but if if we truly miss it, we'll catch it up on the back end. Uh, but yeah, I think this ties into Václav's gossip earlier. Almost certainly. Some of the substances used in these rituals are dangerous, even lethal. Oh, God forbid someone in the Inquisition finds out about it. Oh. Okay. We haven't been introduced yet. Uh, we should eat with Salomea soon, because my god, that is the fanciest dress on the planet. Despite your repeated orders and underhanded threats to explain my reading habits to the Inquisitors in Innsbruck, when you visit I will not be performing any rituals for you. Please end these messages immediately. Thank you. Hochde, so high German is ach if you're like you're Scottish and ich further uh forward or ich further forward depends on perceived by a back or a front vowel. You we weren't done uh we might have the power to check on that uh, again. We'll see if we have the power to check oh I don't have the power to check again. Uh for both our souls. Um Sorry, but that's not what I want to. Uh, journal. Journal. Blah. It doesn't, it doesn't let me read it again. I'm sorry, Wolfie. Uh, okay, the doors are open to us again. Place there. Is it just for the sake of both our souls, the end? Boy, say that! Andreas, I am sorry about what is happening to Brother Piero. I do not know him well, but I find it hard to believe he could have killed the Baron. I will pray for your success. I know it might be far from your mind, but have you considered my offer to eat with you and the townspeople? Oh, right, we need... The Gospel says that man cannot live on bread alone, but from time to time a little bread is required. Of course, I understand. God, God, there's so many people we need. I need to, I need to eat with Sebat. We're gonna finish. We're gonna keep going until I eat with Sebat, and then we'll. That'll be where we wrap up for the day, right? Kitchen and cellar. Can we talk to Piero? Lucas. Hello. Voice love. I'm sorry, Andreas. I can't let you down there. Father Gerno doesn't want anyone talking to Brother Piero before the Archdeacon arrives. What am I going to do? Elope with him? I don't know why I know. Uh, uh, oh, Sebat. Sebat is Ethiopian. Uh, lives in Rome, but is Ethiopian and is illuminated in the same, in an Ethiopian style, which continues stylistically all the way to our lovely, lovely cringy boat. You know this is absurd. What do you want me to do, Andreas? I can't go against the abbot's order. We don't... I understand. I'm sorry. No, you're right. I'll believe it or not. Look. God bless you, Andreas. Boom. Uh, sounds like he has a secret, and if we, we might be able to blackmail him to talk to Piero. That sounds fine. That seems fine. Right. I'm sure nothing bad will happen if from that. Look, this is... As Chad is continuing about German phonetics, which I love dearly, uh, I love that we have a chat that we can do that. Oh, true, we did hear his gossip. We, we already do know his gossip. I forgot that we had already done that. Um... But yeah, uh, right, I would assume Österreich, or Österreicher Deutsch, Austrian Deutsch, whatever, Aust yeah, just go call it Austrian. Uh, it could, since we're in, so like, southern Bavaria, uh, it could just be Austrian dialect, rather than attempt for me to do anything. Um, 
I'm just a language nerd. I'm also a language nerd, Liz, though. I have a minor in linguistics from my undergraduate degree. So, you know, I, I'm fully with you. Uh, I, uh, it just happens to be a language that I'm bad at. But more importantly, uh, right, this is German. If you move 10 kilometers, they're going to be able to tell that you've moved. Right, just, you can move tiny, tiny distances, uh, and they'll be like, no, no, that's the wrong regional dialect. You can't do this. Incredibly useful when you live in Europe. Yeah, it is. I... Yeah. Here they go. God bless you, Andreas. Crypt. Crypt, 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 crypt. Hello. By the way, the crypt... Oh, we talked last time about the, uh the church not being richly enough um painted this one this one's perfect the the ceiling of the crypt having angels literally everywhere um is perfect the sisters made in the library right now i need to wait until el compa monastic hour corresponding to 8 p.m i'm continuing until very late All right. Well, we're going to have to bust in there. Chat, dance party. Medieval dance party right here. God bless you. And, uh, I forgot, already forgot Matthew's voice. Look, all of these... All of these folks just, like, their accents blend together. I haven't made consistent, coherent voices for them. You don't expect that from me. <laughs> exactly, dance party. Alright, chat. Who do we need to talk? IDOC. Oh. I was hoping to talk to IDOC about the riddles, but that's fine. Cemetery. 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 I assume I need to wait until late for this, right? Brother Gerhard's grave was disturbed frequently. Ferenc must have buried something here. I need to dig up this grave after I want to know what he was up to. Perhaps Volkbart would help? I haven't even met Volkbart. I have to do something, right? I have to do one of these options. Uh, there's lots of options there. The prior's house? Hello. Well, hello there. Huh, there are deep indentations on the parchment. If I put it on the page above, it must have been angry. If I can make a charcoal rubbing of this page, I reveal the content of the writing. I need charcoal, though. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, it's the same thing. There we go. There you go. It's the same thing. Now, ah, clear. Clear as an alpine day. This will be where Farring wrote the letter I found in the guest house. And they've. Well, this was blackmailing Farring. It's the same text. Look, I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, Alright, hello, you. What? Well, I just want to work on my masterpiece. Nothing work on my masterpiece. Come on. No? Okay. Okay. Well. What other options exist for us right now? Courtyard and lavatorium? Anyone over here? Anyone over here? Nope. Andreas is authentic procrastinating? True. Anyone in the aquarium? Nope. 
Where is everybody? Chapter House? The scene of the crime. Oh. This blood stain is left. is awful. It must have been left by the Baron before he died, but how? Alright, that strongly suggests then that it happened. That very, very, very strongly suggests that it happened in the cloister. Right. A very strong, and that very strongly doesn't suggest that it happened in the large garden, because that's the complete other side of the chapter. Ah. Abbott's house. Screw you, Farring. Mirabilis. Bonjour. Screw you, Garno. I'm only here for Mirabilis. Okay, I may be also here for Farron. Uh, Andreas, what an awful time. Awful time. A Baron, murdered a Kyrso. These are dark days indeed. Brother Piero, uh, a man I would have never thought him the type. What could have possessed him? You gotta do homework, we don't want to miss anything. Well, we're only going to get to the end of this day. As soon as we have dinner with Sabbath, we're going to call it a day. School your tongue, Andreas. A murderer he may be, but the man is still your brother in Christ. Envy and pride inspire men to madness, Andreas. Even old men. But you have come for me for a reason. Do you need something? You rushed into the scriptorium and hit something Pardon? And why were you sneaking about the scriptorium? I wasn't. Well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Just an academic interest of mine, nothing you need to concern yourself with. Let us seek a common understanding, Master Mallar, as two brothers in Christ. Please, Les, I love to understand things. Ah, Scriptorium is my domain, and you are a guest here. As long as that is true, I do not answer to you, but the abbot only. Is that clear? Don't mind me asking, why aren't you the abbot? It's an elected position. Are you not better suited to the job, given your age and experience? That's not- I will not discuss this with you. Are we done here? Not even slightly. I have a few more questions. Be quick about it. Come across the- What? Where did you get that? Oh, we could just throw me class under the bus. That would be very funny. That would be very funny. He's not here to contradict us. We thought it might shed light on who killed the Baron. It's not as it looks. He meant to coerce me into forming a ritual to help him with a condition. Oh! But I refuse, as the letter makes abundantly clear. Oh, the French disease. Like taking mercury for cream. The mercury might explain his cavalier attitude towards our mutual interest. But he seemed to believe he was untouchable. I am under no such illusions. Mutual. Ah, your share love of cult ledger. I am the prior of the Curacao Scriptorium, one of the few of its kind left in Christendom. Modest of the Abbey may be, our library contains works on subjects rarely found beyond its walls, certainly not all in the same place. For men of certain academic interests, is perhaps the only place we may meet and discuss them. And eh, not in the 16th century. Okay, maybe in the 16th century. Uh, priests in the 15th and 16th century and monks are still the most prominent authors of magical treatises, but this is significantly changing, right? By the turn of the 17th century, right, some of, um, of a more lay background could easily be writing and contributing to texts on magic in learned urban centers. Um, outside of that, into the 19th century, priests are going to be, uh, in folk stories, priests and magicians are the same. There is no distinction between those two categories. Uh, but yeah, right, this is a weird point where in some places at some times this is rapidly changing. 
but in other places, that's a, this is then since that was true, that is going to be true for another 300 years. It's a rich area for scholarly insight. The Baron's interest was more than academic. When he wished to make it practical, I refused. There is nothing more to it. I see. Now, is that all? I have duties I really should attend to. Should we ask him about the blood ritual? Chat, I feel bad to ask him about the blood ritual without, uh, you know, a little bit more concrete stuff to go on. But, uh, hell yeah? See, the University of Salamanca, best known to the lady as a school of man. Sure. Uh, the Sholomancy. Uh, there's an Icelandic, uh, in early modern and modern Icelandic folk traditions, modern being 18th and 19th century, uh, the 11th century uh, prelate Simon Durin Frothi was said to have studied at the Sholomancy and have tricked the devil repeatedly. It's extremely funny. Chat, you're being indecisive. Leave it for now, leave it for now. Be well, Master Mahler. Defensive and evasive. That's fair. What is our journal? That's not the right button. I keep wanting that to be the button for that, despite it also being significantly better. What does our improving thing say? He was defensive and evasive. Well, that's, that's fair. That's honestly pretty reasonable. So what passes time here? Let's go talk to Cecilia. I think talking to Cecilia makes a lot of sense right now. Yes, uh, Adrian Chernikov, welcome. Uh, and yes, thank Wolfie for the gift sub there. Can we all talk to ask Garno? Yeah, fine, we could ask Garno about digging up the grave. He's gonna say no. He's he's going to say he's he's going to say no, chat. We'll ask him, but there's he's a hundred percent gonna say no about this. Andreas, I trust you are biding my command to leave Piero and the rest of the monastics in peace. Mother Gurno is in a difficult position. He hasn't been at the abbey he hasn't been at the abbey long, and he's young. The elder monks don't respect him. Friend of the Prince Bishop murdered under the roof of this abbey. It doesn't look good. Then I may never discover who really killed Lawrence, and Piero will die for it. So be careful not to alienate Garneau before the Archdeacon arrives. I locked into that option. Fine. Frustrating though it is. I do not appreciate your characterization of my reasonable request as frustrating. Nevertheless, I must admit uh, I have not heard any complaints about your behavior, for which I am grateful. I know you and Brother Piero are close. You must trust that Piero is innocent of the Baron's death. God will reveal as much to the arch Archdeacon. There is more at stake here than you understand, Andreas. Given that I am not the Lord and don't have perfect understanding of all things, of course that's the case. But you can conscious let an innocent man face death while a murderer runs loose. Which is why I've come to you with a quote. Remind your folks to stay stretch, hydrate, and take your medicine if you haven't yet. That is an appreciate reminder. This game auto saves, but we do have child commands that have been making me drink fluids. So, yes. Mm -hmm. And. Parank is Gerno's assistant. Suggesting Parank might have killed Lawrence might anger the abbot if the two are close, but could keep Farrington's name out of it entirely. Well, that main reasoning would sound rather vague. What does that have to do with the death of Baron Rothfogel? Do you take me for a fool? I will not let you exhume Brother Gerhard's body on a hunch. Aww. What does it matter? He's nothing more than bones now and for everybody's mind. 
Nope. He should be left in peace. Just as I'd like to be. Leave now and do not pester me about this again. Alright. That's fair. We don't have permission to dig, but that's not gonna stop us. Let's bet Mirabilis for support on the way out. I had two more ups and uh, I was almost impossible to get that. It was almost impossible to get that. Did you notice, right? Uh, even with two ups and one down, there was very... I was not close to clearing it. The question is... What can we actually do? Like, Gerno was not about to give us permission. Like, that was very little chance. Oh, so we're just out. I think you gotta, like, flo throw Florian into the bus? Wow. Yeah, no. So, that ain't gonna happen. Oh, hello. We haven't met you. Hello, folklore. But Gay and Grey are still need something. Father Abbot said I should help you if you needed it. So here I am. Doesn't matter, I need your help with. In fact, there's something hidden in Gerhard's grave. Do you think you could dig it up for me? Did you ask Father Gerno? I want to help, but I don't think I should unless he says it's alright. Wolfbert is a kind man, and he always wants to help, but he's also very credulous. Seeing him would be easy, but... How severe would the abbot's wrath be? After all, Fulcourt is only a novice. Surely he would understand that I tricked him and would be lenient, wouldn't he? He's a novice. To be honest, Andreas, no, I could never. The abbot kick me out for e causing trouble. I, I will have no place to go. I will become like those men in the forest, living all alone. No, 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 I can't, I can't. Fine, we don't have to dig. I didn't mean to upset you. you you're not mad at me? Oh, oh. Neurodivergence, Rob? Not at all. Dear, I will leave you in peace. Be well, brother Folkler. Oh, thank you, Andreas. I'm sorry for crying. Be well. I suspect that like when when we talk about like ability and disability, right? I think right in the year of our Lord twenty twenty two, we'd probably be able to uh, diagnose him with uh, ASD or I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to try. I I am strongly against trying to diagnose historical figures with something, and that feels true for fictional characters uh, in video games. But I think it's sufficient to say, um, probably not neurotypical. Uh, Yep, time to go ask Otto. Otto will help me. Otto's based. Look, we gotta get in. We'll, we'll just bully Otto into doing it. Uh, I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Alright, let's go talk to more people. Cause we'll, heck, I do actually need to check. How bad is my camera battery? My camera battery's fine. Okay. Upper Abbey. And... Convent. Let's talk to Cecilia. Let's try and talk to Cecilia. Cecilia! Is... Is that preferred, Wolfie? Alright, my apologies. Uh... God bless you, Mother Cecilia. Is there something I can help you with? That's fair. Uh, it's causing it a uh, disorder. Uh, my my apologies. I'm 
Given that the Baron was just murdered, it seems worth inquiring about the cause. Why? Do you not trust in the Abbot's judgment? No. Do you? That is not an answer, Andreas. You must be careful how you ask and answer questions right now. If the Abbot does not want anything to interfere with the Archdeacon's investigation, that includes you. Then help me. Help you what? Blame someone else for the murder? Help me find justice. What does justice look like, Andreas? It's not a Socrat. And you are no uh, Thracimachus. Sophists of ancient Greece who debated on Socrates, the nature of justice in Plato's Rep Republic. Someone will die for this murder, Andreas. If it is not Brother Piero, it will be someone else. The killing of a powerful noble cannot go unpunished, especially while he was under the protection of the abbot. Then help me find who did it before the archdeacon arrives. I am simply a nun. Why do you think I can help you? Better than the abbot? The abbot sees only the brother's side. True. All right. I did have reason to be concerned about Baron Rothfogel's presence. The Baron caused irreparable harm to one of the sisters in his last visit. The damage was severe enough that she had to leave us for some time. That is why I removed the sisters from his presence as soon as I could. I cannot know what is in a person's heart, Andreas. Can I at least speak to the sister who was harmed? I... No, Andreas, I don't think that would be appropriate. And what happened or to him? I understand this is less information than you likely wanted, but I do not think I can tell you any more in good conscience. Trust me when I say the victim of this incident could not have killed the Baron. I need more than that. Are there any records on her on what happened? Yes, we keep records on all the sisters in the library. Not that it does you any good. You're not allowed. This again. Again? Here's the way Kyosal has been run for centuries. No men are allowed in the library other than the abbot himself. That's not going to change now. <laughs> oh, come on. No, these aren't the right answers. These aren't, these aren't good answers. These aren't good answers. I'm not going to reveal that I found the craft. Oh, and do you know where it is? Yes, I found it. Damn it! <laughs> Why would you just say that? Don't try it. You'll be caught, and you'd be lucky if the abbot only banished you from the abbey until judgment day. You're probably right. God bless you. May God bless you, Andreas Mahler. Boo. Also, yes, the lace work is nice. Let's go. Yes, yeah, sneak into the library. Check. Maybe it wasn't a good idea. I, I'm with you. I think it wasn't a good idea either. Uh, there's places to invent. Nope. Max. Heck. Uh, other tassing. Um, Bauer, midwife. All right, let's go. Let's go do talk to some people. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, a midwife. Wait. I just realized what I read. Who's the midwife? Right in the middle of town. All right. Where's the Zimmerman house? Alright, it's not there. Neither of those. Yeah. 
Is it in the north town? There's Werner. There's Stolz. Plus the doctor, right? That's not the same. Hello, you're the uh, artist from Nuremberg? And there's Mahler joining me now. Ah, that was it. Mahler. Someone mentioned you doubled that university for a year or two. Funny. Stay now, Warren. That makes sense. You're staying with the Gertners, yes? The Abbey does have a guest house, you know. Gertners are good and gracious people. You know, poor farmers. Tassing is full of miserable people like that. What are you doing here? Building up my contacts. People of mouth do pass through her occasionally, unlikely though it may seem. So you didn't have the connections to find a position in the big city. That, or you weren't good enough. Excuse me! I will not be insulted in my own home by a godforsaken artist! No, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I don't care. Leave. Well, alright. Hmm. Until then. That's fair. There's the bakery. That's the town commons. Hello, Ulrich and Anna. Hi. Insulting lesser people. Great way to build contacts. Exactly. Alright, I guess let's look, talk to... Let's talk... See if Agnes is at home? Yeah, Agnes is at home. Ah, oh, boo. I can't talk to... Agnes. Fine. Schlau. Hello, Andreas. Something you need. You're busy, so I'll keep it brief. I'd have to ask you a few questions about Baron Rothfogel. No. Why not? I don't want to. You are a grown man. That should be reason enough for you. I saw you shouting at the Baron when he arrived in Tassig. What was that about? Get it through your pebble-stuffed head. I'm not talking about Rothfogel. He's not being forced right with me. He seems eager to get away. If I wait here, maybe I'll leave and I can observe his actions. What should I do it now? It'll probably take a while. Well, let's do it. We need to advance time somehow. He's going fishing. Hello, fishing. Schlau, we'll come back you later. Old Otto. Oh dear, is something the matter with the Zimmerman's basin? I'm checking for caterpillars, it's not horrible. Oh my, perhaps I should have you check ours. Are the gardeners feeding you enough? You're looking a little thin. Oh, take some of this bread. That should perk you right up. Nothing like bread to fortify the spirit. True. Delivering it to Father Thomas. You know how the father loves his bread. He's quite the bread enthusiast, my favorite customer, huh? Spontaneous generation of caterpillars. Come by the bakery more often, Andreas. Andrea, Anna would love to see you. So cute when she tries to steal your hat. Oh, of course. Until later. Bye. We remember that we left the door open. We left the oven on. Chat, we left the oven on. Master Mahler, here you are finally at church, and it's not even Sunday. Afternoon. He's over in the churchyard somewhere, crafting stones. Why do you ask? Oh no. Heck. Afternoon, Father Thomas. How's my favorite customer? Ah, oh, Gretz, you know I can't live without my rye. You're too kind. Please, enjoy it with my well wishes. I should be off. Be well, you two. Uh oh. 
Are we being followed? Here's Lucky. Andreas was looking for you. Andreas, what brings you to the church? Ha <laughs> ha! Ah! Uh oh. Can't I enjoy the fresh alpine? You can do that anywhere in task. Why are you doing it here? Are you following me, Andreas? Yes! Yes. Damn it, Andreas! Don't play dumb with me. Lucky, leave the man be. He and I were talking about the church. All is well. Now tell me, how's my wall? The damage is not difficult to repair. I can do it next week. I put the fallen stones back up now. And it would be marvelous. I'm sure the lady would appreciate it too. Well, please, don't risk yourself. Get some younger men to help you. I'd offer, but I'm afraid I was cursed with the physique of an artist. <laughs> After you, Father Thomas. Andreas. Curse my weak nerd arms. The, sorry, the weak nerd arms were a feature, not a bug. Lucky, okay, see you soon. Don't work too hard, eh? I mean, they're on the way to go fishing. Even at his age, Lucky is quite able. Only Big York can match his strength. Thank you for your labors, Lucky. Father Thomas is the waterfall where Father Thomas might know where the men go fishing. If I ask him he'll know I actually am following Lucky, which he could tell Lucky later. Lucky would be unhappy about that, especially since he already believes I'm following him. It's not a good idea to get on the bad side of a man who's so strong. I doubt I could hold my own against him. No. Huh. Bye. Oh, uh, goodbye. Very unusual, man. We're gonna sneak and hide in the book. This is this is so dumb of us. We're gonna get attacked by hornets. We are about to get attacked by hornets, chat. Uh, I am calling it now. All right, that was a Hercules beetle. Are we playing a quick time event? Are we seriously quick time events uh, on? How good we are at bugs? I mean, that was a little stag beetle. That wasn't. Oh, Christ. God, those poor fish. Until later, Otto. Where's he off to? What's he doing over in the old sulfide? What's he doing over in the salt pine? And a friendly local bush. Oh. More importantly, the tiny owl is still here. True. The tiny owl is still here. Zwei Unschuldige. That's strange. Are there two people buried here? Children, perhaps? Could they be lucky children? But why are they buried outside of the churchyard? That it's almost like someone is trying to hide them. Wow, but he left a note with the flowers. This is a palimpsest. Oh, uh, chat. So one terrifying. 
why is it so fancy? Why is the like a dancer that's mentions a grab for zwei Öschelier the water vogel flech water vogel is roth vogel right matutina capital house this is oh this is a blackmail or this is a conspiracy note oh fuck wait sorry this is this is a so i think lucky did the killing uh the chapter house is where it took place. The t Madden's is the time. And someone is someone is pressuring Lucky into doing this by reminding him of presumably his wife and kid or well the uh, who whoever the two innocents are that died due to a failed abortion after assault by Rothwell is my assumption. Jesus Christ. Uh, the other thing that's worrying me, though, is that there is writing on the either on the other side that's bleeding through the paper, or that has been erased. Someone was trying to lure Lucky to the chapter house to kill Baron Rothfogel. It remains to be seen if he did. Damn, I've lost Lucky. Pregnant daughter? That would also be a very good option. Yeah. If the, if his daughter was the one who was assaulted, would be... Yeah. But it doesn't seem important to him, but could it be motive enough for him to kill Lawrence? I wonder until I figure out who's buried here. Yeah. This is dark. This is getting real dark real fast. <gasps> oh, what are the kids doing here? Hello, Paul. Oh, hi. Afternoon, Paul. What are you kids doing down here? I wonder if his daughter was also the nun who was harmed? Yeah. Flogs. Ah! <laughs> Wouldn't you have better luck by the river? We're, we're not really looking for frogs. I am! <laughs> Me too! It appears you're outnumbered. Why don't you tell me what you're really up to? It's nothing bad. We're throwing rocks! Bert! Rocks down the hole! You're throwing rocks in the old mine. Flaga. Maybe. Ah, oh, chat. Zero out of ten. Z there were no frogs just off, off screen. It's just, they fall for a long way? If you're on the edge, you can hear them go plink way down below. Nope. There were kittens in a bundle. I've thrown a hundred rocks. It's really not that many. I mean, it's not not that many. What do you think's at the bottom? Rocks. <laughs> aside from the rocks. <laughs> so, Dad says the dead guys ate it. He means the Romans, they built the salt mine, the aqueduct too. The aqueduct, the imperial road, and many other things besides. Seems this town is riddled with Roman building projects. Tell them about the treasure! Oh, right, there's something shiny at the bottom. It's what we want to hit with the rocks. What do you suppose it could be? I don't know, I guess I hadn't thought about it. There still is a bundle of kittens. But there still is no fraud. The treasure. We should get it. I don't think that's a good idea. It's a long way down. You could be hurt. So, I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> that says this blasphemy. <laughs> Are you gonna tell Andreas? No, the treasure will be our secret. Yes! Thank you, Master Mama. All right, until later. Bye. You all should be careful, okay? You don't trust us. I know you don't. We're not gonna. We're not gonna peek. Yeah, yeah. Don't. I. Look. I was responsible. 
Find something to eat with. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Seba? Hey, Seba, can I eat with you? Hey. Se Seba? There's a lot of people we can eat with. Yes, we can eat with Seba right now. Perfect. Look, if... If Josh allowed anything bad to happen to these children, I would kill everybody. Okay? Don't tell stories about children unless you have a, or about children getting hurt unless you have a really strong reason to. God bless you, Andreas. Do you have time to eat with me and some of the townspeople? Yes. Of course, I'll talk to Greta and see who she wants to come along. Where shall we meet you? Trying to St. Moritz, I'll see you there. Until then. Yes. Oh, everybody's here. Oh, look. See, all the kids are fine. See, see, the kids are fine. We summoned them away from there. Uh, and all of the kids. Oh my, Andreas. Uh, yes? <laughs> are these all of the mothers from Tassing and their children? Well, no, I don't think it's all of them. Helena Pfeiffer couldn't make it. It's a long way up here in her condition. And Hedy said Hans was too big for stories. Who is Hans? That's Hans. Stories? I may have said something about your books. I like stories! Yes, maybe a little too much. Ha! <laughs> Alright, I can tell a story, but first let's pray together and eat. Ursula! Ursula! Oh Lord, thank you for bringing us together as you brought Jesus to his disciples on the road to Emmaus. With the breaking of bread between us, let us recognize each other as Christians and rejoice in our salvation through you. Amen. Amen. Ah! Ur Ursula has said um, and I love her. And I thank you and your husband for this bread, Gert. Or Gret. My Ulrich already says that bread brings people together. <laughs> I think we could get some real trouble with asking if you ever ran out of bread. Cheese and bread. Those are my options. And almonds. Because always almonds. Oh, you and Father Thomas. You both love that pie. And Forrest, I thank you for the follow just now. I just think it's an underappreciated bread. Father Gurno eats a white bread, does he not? Yes, the finest wheat is used for the abbot's bread. Why? The abbot is a very important man, Paul. We have a bread in my home that we call injera. We make it thin, round, and wide, and we put our food on top of it. Ethiopian flatbread freaking slaps, chat. Um, there was a really good Ethiopian uh, restaurant in the town where my parents live. Injera is so tasty. Mm. We eat it with almost every meal. As you love the bread of your home, so I miss mine. And bread. Broid. Oh, what's the recipe? Maybe we can make it. Well, thank you, but no, we use a fine grain that does not grow here, called teff. Surely someday you'll go home. God willing, yes. But then perhaps a day will come when I miss the rye of Tassing. It is the great danger that comes with the blessing of travel, living a life of between worlds. I don't want to talk about bread anymore. It's so boring. Blah. Don't be rude, Bert. I did say I would tell a story. Children, have you ever seen a Bible? Father Tom? Yeah, Father Thomas has one. It's huge! My dad has one. It was printed in Bamberg. Very good. This is a Bible from my home that I brought to give to the abbot. Andreas, do you have a favorite story to illustrate from the Bible? Jacob wrestling with the angel. It is a powerful image and speaks to us as we struggle to comprehend the divine. 
My struggles are not as spectacular as Jacob's, but just as difficult, and may leave us transformed, as he was. Now then, children, do you know the story of Jesus feeding the multitudes? Fish and loaves! My mom and dad make loaves. This is from our Bible, how we tell the story of how Jesus fed thousands from only a few fish and a few loaves of bread. Why is everyone brown? Because where I am from, everyone looks like me. Why? Because we are all as God has made us. I know tasking seems big to you, but the world is so much bigger than we can imagine. There are many different people of many different colors all over the world. There are places where no one looks like you or me. Really? It's true. In Flanders, I saw chefs arrive from the New World. The people look and dress very differently from us. Differently from Brother Sevat. They make art out of gold that is so beautiful it outshines the greatest works of the Christian world. Brother Sevat, did you know the Baron who was murdered? Oh, Berthold. Bert! It came up when I was visiting the Crockers. I'm sorry, Maria. There's nothing to apologize for. We can't shield them from the world forever. I did not know him, Bert. But do you know the story of Lazarus? Mm, no? Great, let's eliminate another one. He was a friend of Jesus. He became sick, and he died. Uh, Hat. But Jesus brought his followers to Lazarus too. He prayed to God, and when they opened the tomb, Lazarus emerged, returning from the dead. Jesus can bring people back from the dead? He can, Bert. One day Jesus will bring us all back from the dead. Everyone who has ever lived and died will come together and be resurrected on Judgment Day. <laughs> Even the Romans? <laughs> yes, the Romans too. Ursula! Why did you ask about the Romans? I uh, saw one come out of their tomb like Lazarus. What do you mean, Paul? Well, the ruins below the mill were Roman, and they all died a long time ago. But I saw one come out the other night. They were in white, like Lazarus. I've stopped telling stories, Paul, and you shouldn't have been outside at night. Andreas, what does he mean? I think I may have seen something similar the other evening. What? Really? Where? Uh, same place by the Roman ruins. Maybe if Paul did see a spread of some kind. It is a very dire omen if that is what he saw. I will pray on this. Well, apologies for that, ladies, but thank you for sharing a meal with me today. I'll be leaving for Rome soon, but I'm glad to have spent some time with you and your children. Thank you, Brother Sabot. It was wonderful. Don't forget to stop by the bakery before you go. I'm sure my husband will want to see you before you go. I will. God grant you all hell. Is Ursula munching on rocks? Ursula may be munching on rocks. Alright. Time to get back to work. And it is time for us to wrap up our stream. So Chad, thank you all so much for joining me. God, I love this game so much. I love this game so much. They're, they're, do, right, they're doing so much fun stuff with how bookish it all is. And it's so nice. We had some dark stuff where there's a lot of like very real trauma hiding just below the curtains, but it's also adorable and the kids are adorable. Uh, we'll be, let's see. I think we're going to take Thursday off because it is Thanksgiving in the US and I need to make turkey. Well, actually I don't have turkey. Make ham and pie. 
And then we'll be back on Saturday with more God of War Ragnarok. And then we'll be playing this a bunch more uh, early next week. So, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of time off of it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think we may not be back for like another week with this game, uh, just due to the nature of how this works. But we'll have a couple streams next week of it, etc. So anyway, I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. Even if you don't live in the U.S., have take it as an excuse to go have a nice dinner with friends, because that's always better. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, do make sure that you're followed so you don't miss any of the other streams. We've got a guest coming up for God of War Ragnarok, uh, Luca Pnaro, a PhD candidate at the University of Iceland and a dear friend of mine. So I hope you'll all join us for that as we talk more history and video games. But otherwise, uh, yeah, until next time, I will see you all around. I'm loving this game so much, and I'm glad you're all loving it with me. Okay? Until, then, until next time I see you. Everyone, I hope you have a very good night.